welcome back to the origin pro class we are going to continue by navigating the origin lab website so once you come to www.originlab.com you'll be able to access all the products of origin lab which includes origin origin pro and origin viewer for this class we'll be using origin pro origin pro has all the analytical tools that you need the others don't have it so that is the key in having origin pro the software is not free so you have to purchase it you can purchase as an academic student an institution you can have a license so you can navigate the website and see where you fall if you're a commercial user you can also have whichever license that you need to purchase but once you download the application after purchasing and then you launch you will see something like this once you launch you have the system template you have about 13 templates that origin provides you have linear calibration you have interpolate x and y you have assays you have blank workbook most people use blank workbook because that is just a starter you can make all these things using blank workbook so once you have your window this is how your origin interface looks like you have a workbook and you have also worksheets you can have a lot of worksheets but to start with let's just open one file and then see how it looks like so this is how the plot will look like this is how your worksheet will look like you can add other stuff functions in here so your title toolbar is the first thing that you need you you see the title of your file saved you have the location and then you have the version of origin pro that you're using and then you can also come to view toolbars and you can see all the toolbars that are in here for you you can navigate this and just use it to learn about all the toolbars you have your standard toolbars where you can have new and all that you have your graph toolbar at the side you have your style toolbar just like microsoft word or excel you have your 2d graph toolbar also here and all the toolbars you can just come in here and then navigate and use to just go through it in the next lesson we will go ahead and look into the workbook and also graph so we just let an overview of workbook and graph the lesson is getting exciting so see you in the next class hello welcome back to the last lecture of the first section of the course in this section we will do a brief overview of the workbook and graph note that graph will be studied in detail in the next section the origin workbook is the primary structure for organizing your data so in a workbook you can have as much as 255 worksheets in here you can add so many different rows and columns so you can come in here and add many different rows and columns in there and you can also label your plots you can do some maths with your rows and columns you can add comments you can add units to your plots so it's a very nice tool to have you can also use the project explorer you can see that you can have different books so you can have you can handle a very large project in your workbook or in your in your workspace you also have different graphs so you can have as many as possible handling projects you can go back in here and drag different projects from different folders into your current one that you're using so that is workbook the last thing about workbook is you have a whole section dedicated for columns you can do filtering you can do masking you can do all these things in here you can set what you want the column to represent whether an x-axis a y-axis an error bar we will do a lot of demonstrations in these the last and final thing is graph so the same thing if you go to graph you have so many inbuilt template for graphs um, that you can play with you, you have 2d basic 2ds so most of the graph that you ever plot in life can be found in here and then you have 3d and all so that makes it very interesting and easy to use so with the graph you can also edit it in so many ways so if we expand this you can edit the scale the text the title the grid you, you have so much flexibility you can move 
the legion around you can edit it you can you can label easily you can change how the numbers look you can change the colors of the borderline of your graph you can change the thickness of your plot so it's a nice tool to use and we'll get into much detail in the next section and this brings us to the end of the first section which is a brief intro to origin in the next section we will study in depth to data visualization see you in the next section hello thank you for joining the origin pro class i hope you enjoy the first section in this section we will deal with generating data manipulating data and graphs we'll learn how to import data into origin how to generate data in origin we'll explore the worksheet menu we'll learn how to save data and publish your data from this section onward there will be exercises embedded in each section it could be at any point it could be at the end but I'll put the solution or how to work it in the first video of the next section. So this is something I wanted to throw out there. So without wasting much time, let's jump into the content for this section. So the first lecture is how to import data into origin. And we'll start by just selecting a blank workbook. And this looks like Excel. So you have your X and your Y's. So the first way to generate data is just by typing your data experimental data or whatever that you have you type your numbers in here and you're good to go if you need more columns you can just come to the column section come to add new columns and you can type in the number of columns that you want to add if you also need a row you can just select the row and right click and insert row you can do it at any point to insert row so you can have many rows just like excel the cool thing about origin is you can set all these columns to be your x your y or anything so for instance if you just right click on one of the columns and come to set as you can set as an x you can set as a y or a z or an error bar so for instance let's complete this so if we copy this section here and then paste it in here and let's try another one paste it in here so you have x y y y y y so if we try this and we we plot it we'll have multiple um y's so you see that there's plot for b for c for d for e for f in here however you can set this as your x so now you have x1 y1 x2 y2 and you can also set this as your x you can set anything for any value and now if you plot that you only have the y's showing so b d and f so these ones become your x axis the ones that you set as your x and you can do same for error bars um you can set as your x error or your y error depending on what you want to do so that is the first way of generating data the other way is to import so you can add a new worksheet you just come to you just right click on sheet and then go to insert so at this point you can go to data okay before i go to data i am using a cloud-based origin so it's hosted by citrix most likely you use the computer software and it's a little bit different so some of them you can just come to file and you see import in here but if you're using a cloud base, you can only get your files that you save on origin from Citrix. So if you go to import, there are so many extensions that you can choose from. I don't know which file type that you need, but 
whatever that you need is here you can also connect from a file from matlab code from excel i use excel so this brings me to the origin cloud base but if you are using the software itself it will take you to your computer you can go to your desktop your document or wherever you saved your files and then select the file that you want to import the thing about excel is whatever that you have what comments that you have everything will come in so for instance i will explain this in another lecture but this is the long name so you can just select it right click and go to set as a long name then it pushes up because you don't want words in the spreadsheet um this is the unit section so you can right click again come to set as unit you can come to this is my comment so you set as comment so now you have your worksheet available in there The other way which it's difficult to do with a cloud way is just opening your Excel. So you can do it easily with um, the software that you install on your PC. But the ones that are hosted, you can just come in here and copy whatever columns and do copy, come back in here and then, and then paste it. However, it's quite difficult to do see it's just copying it's just pasting the one that i did before it's quite difficult to do it with a cloud-based one but you can do it if you have the software-based one my one data file will be added to the course so you'll get it and you can also work with it we'll use it for many things in this lecture so make sure you download it and use it so this will be all for how to import data into origin in the next lecture we'll learn how to generate data in origin so you see the first way of generating data is just typing the numbers but there are other ways to also generate data i will go through it in the next lecture hello in this section we'll learn how to generate data in origin We'll begin by selecting a blank workbook. And as I showed previously, you can always generate data by just typing your values and manipulating this. But what I want to show is how you can randomly or carefully make a data. So you can select a column. So we've selected an X axis and you right click and you can go to fill column width and you can go with row numbers uniform numbers uniform random numbers normal random numbers a set of numbers so you can navigate through all these but this is what i want to show a set of numbers so once you select you see a dialog box like this and you have your x-axis so you can select maybe from 10 to 10 and you can make it a repeat and increment you can change it to let's say any number it could be one it could be 0 0.1 so once you change it to 0 0.1 you see the total number of whole sets changes to 201 if you change it to 0 0.2 yeah it changes to 101 and you can also set the repeat times for each value the repeat time for each sequence can also be changed so if you change this to two see that the total number changes and all so once you hit okay the numbers are randomly generated for you so these are not um, random numbers but they are generated for you but you can select random numbers i'll show that in this section so you right click on the column come to fill column with select set of numbers this time let's choose ten thousand. okay minus let's say 10 to hundred thousand, and let's make them random 
so we are just making a random numbers in here yes so with this you've generated your values you can just plot it a quick plot and you have something like this but what you can do is you can carefully design your data using this tool so by manipulating and carefully choosing the intervals and all you can make this tool yeah so the total number can even be chosen and it makes it more interesting to use so that is one way of generating data in origin another way which i want to show is you can also use the formulas just like in excel you can you can do some math on a formula and then set it to another column so that is the same you can just come to the formula section so to do that let's start with adding more columns let's add 10 columns and let's comment so let's call this one let's call this two let's call this three let's call this four so what you can do is if you have some numbers in your column and you just want to do a math maybe add a scalar to it or whatever match that you want to do you can just come to the formula section and just type let's say i want to multiply by two just type two times and then you type column which is col and this column is b so you just put it in a bracket b and hit enter and you've multiplied everything by two you can just copy this and then paste to this side and maybe change this to three and hit enter now you've multiplied this column b by three another way is also to go to set column which you can right click on a column and go to set column values you can also go to the column section and go to set column values so this is kind of like a calculator or a formula sheet for you so it's like an expanded version of this and you can type so it's showing you where the math or whatever manipulation you're going to do where the result will be shown as column e you can select column f so this is where it will go to if you do any math in here and you can do let's say four times column column b and hit apply and you see it is it also works in here so that is the cool thing but what makes it interesting in origin which we will deal with in the data analysis section is you have so many tools especially functions that you can work with inbuilt functions that you can work with and it gives you kind of a template and you are just filling um with whatever data selection that you do so we'll we'll play around this when we get to the analysis section so this is just to demonstrate how to generate data and manipulate data in origin so in the next class we will explore the worksheet menu and see what it can do so the worksheet menu has a lot of things that it does so we'll manipulate the worksheet menu and it will be interesting so see you in the next class hello so in this lecture we will explore the worksheet menu there are so many things that you can manipulate your data using the worksheet menu and just to keep in mind we have 101 rows and we have four different y-axis so the first thing we want to do is to sort range 
you can just copy a range okay and come to your worksheet and you can choose whether you want it to be an ascending order or a descending order in there you can also customize it you want maybe missing values to be the largest and all you can you can work with all those stuff so for instance if if we come in here and we choose ascending order you have an ascending order you have the lowest to the highest well let's just undo that okay so that is that is that you can just select the whole and do it you can also sort columns so you can choose a column and the same way for a range just come in here and play with these ones also you can sort the whole worksheet you can you can just copy everything and sort it out you can also clear your whole worksheet the easiest way is just do Control a and delete but you can just come in here and clear now once you do Control a and delete it doesn't delete the section the long name the units so it doesn't delete it but if you come here and go to clear worksheet you should just pop up that everything will go away so if you do it you, it's undoable so yeah that you can keep that in mind then you have your worksheet script so this is kind of the same um so you have the worksheet script where you can edit each cell how it looks like so for instance the size you can you have the row size you can change the row numbers bulk in here you have number of columns so if we change this to let's say thousand we can then have thousand rows in here if we change it to whatever value we can have in here so you can explore that also the script so you can have your size column numbers you can have the height you can have the width and all how you want to format this depends on you i am comfortable with what i have in here but just to throw it out there you can do all these in origin you can also copy columns so you just come in here you can select the worksheet so this is the worksheet and you can select the column that you want to copy so let's say you want to copy column e and then you want to copy it to let's say g and you want to copy the data you can check this you can also ignore hidden rows if you have a if you've maxed your data you can either choose to copy it or leave it and click ok so it just copies it over there so these are all interesting things that you can do in origin you can for instance split columns so you can select all the columns but let's say you've selected four or select any column or as many as you want come in here so columns to split you can come in here and choose which columns you want to split or column you want to split you can choose all columns or select from worksheet or select columns so let's say we want to split if it's wrong so let's let's choose d and we want to split by every nth row so you can select maybe by every 20th row it split right or you can select by sequential and rows or by reference columns which you can also do reference columns and split by yourself and add all these features these are all things to explore so it's just to update you on what origin can do and you can choose what the, where the output will go so if you want a new sheet a new book so let's choose a new sheet so this brings us to a new sheet and you see it splits after every 20th it splits it which is a nice tool to use if you're if you're dealing with 
huge data set yeah you can also append your worksheet you can select maybe the whole book or the folders or sheet and project and then so i've selected everything in here and if you want to en append or you want to ap append let's say some specific columns you can also do that in here you can choose the columns that you want to append in there but let's say you want to append the whole worksheet you can output also could be a new sheet and then once you come here you see everything that you have is joined to one specific sheet for you so this is just to show you that you can come in to the worksheet and you can reduce columns you can stack columns on stack columns you can split and all so that is something that i just wanted to share and make you aware that you can do all these things using origin so in the last lecture of the first section we'll learn how to do a quick plot because we'll need it for our exercise and also we'll learn how to organize our data how to save our data and even how to open your data so it's, it's quite a short lecture but it will help us to do our exercise so see you in the next lecture hello welcome to the last lecture in the second section in this lecture we will look at how to do a quick plot how to organize your data and graphs how to save and how to do a project backup so for a plot you for instance if you select x1 and y1 you come to plot so take note we are going to do plots in the next section so we'll do advanced plotting but this is just a basic one you're having this data right so this is the plot this is a simple plot you can also plot x1 and this y1 you can for instance plot a scattered plot in here once you come to the project explorer window you see book one so when you select book one this is our book one you can rename it so let's say you rename this into my one book and you can also rename all your graphs in here so it's interesting to do so that's how you organize your data or your plot and your graphs you can rename all of this you can hide one if it's too crowded and you can bring it back if you want to show it so that is one way of doing it you can also use the project explorer to go back to different files and folders i don't have many here but you can drag some to this workspace and all that you can do that in there so to save your file you come to file you come to save project because i've already saved it as untitled you can come to file let's say project um, save us but if you click save and you haven't saved you see this let me save this to scrap paper and you can save it so the key is for the files that you save on the cloud you can access it from your pc but the ones that you save on your pc you can just see the icon on origin and click it and it will launch that program but if if you come to open yes if you have a if you have the pc version you see these files on wherever you saved once you click it you can open it but once you save through the cloud you have to always launch through um, citrix and open before you can launch it 
so that will be all for the first section i have a small exercise for this section that I, I would like you to try i just want you to generate a set of x column values from 0 to 60 with increments of 0 to 1 0 0.1 we've done all these things you just do a simple plot and we'll do advanced things with this so make sure you have it and you save it but in case you can do it i'll show it in the next lecture so see you in the next section we'll do more advanced plotting and advanced features in origin before we start this section we would want to solve the previous sections exercise so the first work was to generate a set of x column values from 0 to 60 with increment of 0 0.1 so let's just add a new sheet so that is sheet 2 and this is the x column values so you you right click and then come to a set of numbers you choose 0 to 60 0 0.1 and I didn't specify this so you keep it at 1 so you have that then the next one is so number 2 generate a set of y column values from minus 100 to 1000 with increments of 27 set repeat time for each value to 3 and repeat time for each sequence to 2 so that is saying you come to y you come to set and then you change this from minus 100 to a thousand and then you change increment to 27 and I still repeat but you set repeat um to three and then you set the sequence to two and you hit okay so number two is done the third one is to plot column x and y so a simple plot you just select x you hit control you hold control and then select y you come to the plot menu you go to 2d and just a normal line plot note we'll do a more detailed plot this is just for demonstration so you have this nice plot in here for number three then four now we want to do some analysis on the column so we want to divide column y by square root of two and generate another y column with those values so the first thing you will have to do is to add more columns that will be more appropriate so you come to the column section and you go to add column yes you can add let's say 10 now so we want another y column so the question was to divide this column by the square root of 2 so we can come in here and write the formula by dividing column b by square root of 2 and generate the values here we can also go to set column values which will be more easy and use column c is what we want you can come to function and come to math and come to square root so it gives you this pop-up takes a double x and returns the square root so what we want to do is we want to do column b divided by square root of 2 and hit apply so there you go 
so we could have just typed column b divided by square root of 2 and that would also be correct and the final exercise was to plot column x and the new value of y or the new column of y so you can select x hold control and select y and then go to plot and then recently use we use a line so you can use that and it's just a scalar so if you compare these two you should see that this is divided by square root of two so the numbers are lower than these ones but the shape is virtually the same so that was a small exercise that we did and i believe this will help you to know how to generate data you can also import some of data into it and play with it in the next section we'll use the tools toolbar on these we'll, we'll, we'll do a lot of great things with it the tools toolbar is very important if yours doesn't show remember you can go to view tools bar and you can search for tools which is you, you can check this one and you can have it in there so that is what i have for you see you in the next lecture for tools toolbar thank you in this section we will take a look into the tools toolbar which is one of the most important things to know before you delve into plotting. Now in the tools toolbar, we are going to use the exercise one file. If you did the exercise, you should have this. If you, if you didn't do it, I have still attached. I will still attach an Excel to help you um, get the data so you can also follow along. So with that said, let's get into the toolbar. First, if you don't have the toolbar, the tools toolbar in here, you should go to view toolbars and then scroll to tools and you will have it. So toolbars work mostly on plots, the tools toolbar, sorry, works on plot. So let's zoom into um, the first plot, which is column X and Y. So you plot these two, if you haven't, you plot X and Y and you get this so once you have this the first point is the pointer this is what we already have this helps you to navigate around you can highlight one and it will give you a brief note so it says pointer object selection mode next one is scaling so scaling and scale out so this is scaling and scale out so the scaling and scale out helps you to zoom in and out with access rescaling so if you select scaling you can select maybe this region and you have it in here if you select scale out it goes back so maybe you want to do an analysis on just this portion you can just scale in you can even scale in more or even more as you want and you can do some analysis on those section and once you click scale out it keeps going back to the till it gets to the original so that is a cool tool to know the next is the pointer so you need a screen pointer which will help you know your coordinates so maybe you want to know this point but before you know you have to zoom in so that is why scaling is very good so let's say you want to know this coordinate you can easily come in and select this coordinate which is 12 and maybe 790 some there something there about so that is how to just get a coordinate on your on your plot the next one is highlighter which is just like the pointer but it's going to highlight let's choose the highlighter for instance you can also highlight a point and it also gives you the coordinate so that is useful if you are doing something interesting where you have to highlight some point you have your data selector this helps you to select certain range on your plot so you see that the as i move the x and the y moves along your plot so you can select a range of your plot 
maybe for some reason you want to delete this site you can just one click on it and then you have set display range you have reset full range you have copy data so you can copy just that data and paste it so or you have delete so let's start with delete you just delete and you have this so control z will undo it for you let's let's try another one let's say you have this side you can just yeah then just click on it once you can set this as your data range so instead of deleting this is your data range that you need and it's a and it's very useful if you want to maybe just delete some portion of your data and it will help you so again control z you can delete it away so what i'll do is i'll just go ahead and replot this one so your next two will be masking so masking helps you during analysis if you want to mask a certain portion so let's say this is no smoothing we'll do smoothening or we'll do yeah we'll do smoothening in analysis so let's say we want to do smoothening but we don't want to smooth the whole thing so we want to mask so let's say we want to mask the side let's say you want to mask the side so you've masked the side now when you do a smoothening it will leave the side out so let's just try if you come to analysis and we'll do smoothening later on so um, you shouldn't worry about this you come to smooth come in here let's just choose lowless and let's choose a auto preview so that we can see and let's do say 0 0.7 and so you have this smoothening effect but it doesn't affect where the masking is so you've smoothened this side and this side but it doesn't affect where the masking is so control z to undo and once you have your mask if you want to unmask you just select unmask and select the range that you want to unmask and now you have it back so that's also a nice tool if you're doing analysis and you just want to select a certain data range you can also add text files um, and just type something in there once you have your text file you can rotate it you can edit it you can use these which we'll get into later when we get to customizing graphs and the last one will be annotation so if you want to add some annotations you just select annotation and put it in there so it gives you this annotation so if you can select another point and then double click you can select another point maybe here and double click the cool thing about annotation is you can come in turn and edit your annotations how they look so you can double click on the annotation itself and you can edit the text you can make it bold let's say italic and there you go apply so it moves to italic you can make it bold apply then you can edit it you can add a frame so we'll do most of these things in in a plot section so i don't want you to worry much about it but so you have a box in a box you can add a color to the box you can make the borderline a different color so all these things are what makes origin so interesting and interactive so you can just edit this there are so many tools that you can do with it so you see it kind of shows where the point is and that is same for that so this is also useful for your plot so this is what we'll do for the first part of section three tutorials and see you in the next lecture. Welcome back to the last section of section 3. We will continue with a tools toolbar. We've done so many exciting things but you can also do arrow so you can just draw an arrow. You can select the arrow, select this point and move it around. You can hold 
so to draw a new arrow you can come in hold a shift to draw a horizontal so if you move it up or down it's still horizontal you can also select it again and then draw a vertical but you, you have to hold shift and draw a vertical arrow so you can kind of modify your plot maybe show some arrows and add some text to it that maybe this is downwards this is upwards all in your plot you can have a curved arrow where you hit one and then you hit another there you go so what you do let me repeat it again you have a curved you click and then you click and then you click and you can still bend it any way that you want it so this will also help you kind of modify your plot you can do some adjustment in there you can move it around you can resize the next is this is an arrow but this is also a freehand draw so you can just select the freehand draw and you can draw any um, feature that you want you can select it and move it around you can rotate it you can change the size there's so many things that you can do with it you can edit it once you double click on any of these um, you can come in here change the colors change the width so let's make this a little thicker you can make it dash lines you can change the transparency you can add an arrow head you can also add these features to it so now you see the bottom you can change all these dimensions and all that is why i always say origin is great because it can do what others can do better you can move it around as well the interesting thing is which i'll show next but you can also have a polyline tool a curve tool a freehand draw or a line so line is the same you can draw any line you can hold shift and draw you can hold shift and then draw vertical lines or you can also hold shift again and draw draw vertical lines and this is horizontal sorry so that is it the interesting thing about this is you can select it and once you see this you right click on it and go to copy now you can close this away let's add a new sheet and then paste you have a copy of the freehand sketch which you can plot that separate which is something so cool to do so you see this is the freehand sketch that we did this is so cool to do and you have a different plot I find this to be so cool you can do many things with that it depends on what you need it for but you can edit this around very well you can also check some of the menus in here you can send to back send to forward you can fill color and basic stuff can be done in here as well the next tool is shapes so you can also add shapes to your plot or your graph you can add a rectangle you can double click and edit it maybe you want it red apply if you want to fill if you don't want any fill you can maybe choose none if you want patterns you can choose patterns in your fill you have so many things to do in this origin and it makes it very interesting finally you can also insert graph you can add word stuff maybe shapes from microsoft word you can just select in here and insert equations it said just like microsoft word it will pop up so let me, let's just do one and see you can just select object and then microsoft word images yeah so you have it in here you can go to home and 
design if you want to insert a shape so let's say you want to insert smiley face in your plot you can just come in here and draw it in there and play around it once you click in here it takes you to word once you click in here it brings you back you can hide the word by just right clicking and selecting the first one and you have your file but once you select the image and double click it will bring you back to word again so you have to do the editing in word but you can add your image and maybe drag it these are some of the cool stuff that you can do in origin and i think we have done many great things so far i have one exercise but in the next section is going to get more exciting because we are going straight into plotting we will go to plot and go through almost all these features so it's so nice we'll do many nice things in here from the next section going so this is the exercise what i want you to do is just draw the first letter of your name in a graph area so i'll just give you a clue all you have to do is do a freehand sketch and then copy get the coordinate copy it in a new worksheet and then go back again draw your last name the initial and copy it set it into that same worksheet and then plot and you have the coordinate to your initials which i think is something cool to have all right so thank you and see you in the next section before we kick off this section we want to do the previous exercise which i believe was fun so the first one was to draw the first letter of your name in the graph area but before that because we want to save it as my initial i want to have my initial so i want to save a new one so this is what we had before but i just want to save it and then go to new let's just choose new workbook and then i will save this as my initial so my initials okay so what you can do is you can just come in here and plot which will give you an empty region for plot so the first one was draw the first letter of your name in a graph area so you come to freehand draw tool and minus g so let's say is this it doesn't look good let's try another one yeah let's try another one so let's try g uh, let's see so i have my first one so the next question is two which is get the coordinates of those letters in a new worksheet so we select it and then right click and copy and you zoom out come to worksheet and paste so i have it here i can rename the x as first initial and go back to the graph so i have it now we can delete this one so the third question is repeat one step one and step two for your last name so mine is an a so i'll come in here again and draw this a um let's make it messy a little bit and select it so okay let me read a question it says so get a coordinate in for step three and set the column of x and y as two in a worksheet you created and five is plot both initials okay so let's just copy this again and come in here now i don't have any room so i have to go to column add new columns let's say 10 
and just come to the side right click and paste and i have to name because these x's are different so i have to call this as my or oh, sorry i have to set this as x so that was what i was saying so now you have x1 y1 x2 y2 and let's call this last initial and the last one was to plot so you can come in here and plot them so you have your g which is quite nice and the cool thing is you can edit it and we'll do a lot of these in this section so and beyond so don't worry but you can just make it bigger up bolder you can make a lot of adjustments add shadows and all to it which is a cool exercise i guess you can also do same for the last name last initial plot and you have it in here um, let's see how it comes if you plot both together oh so there you go that is so cool yeah now you have both together you can last and first all right so that was a cool exercise and i guess you enjoyed it maybe this has given you an idea beyond my teaching you can share with me if you want to so that will be it for this but in this section we will bounce off to plot and we will start with 2d we'll go through a lot in this section so stay tuned it's gonna get interesting we'll do scatter plot we'll do most of these plots and you see how to represent data differently in many different ways so stay tuned and there is more to come thank you welcome back to section four i hope you enjoy section three in this section we will study 2d plot and we will begin our lesson with scatter plot so you just have to click a new worksheet i have attached a new file so just go to open and open scatter i have the excel attached so you can also just copy it in there for plot you first of all have to generate your data for which you want to plot and then you always have to select the book or the workbook before you see plot so if there is graph you won't see plot i'll show that later on we want to start with scatter plot so you just select your x and hit con hold control and select your y and you can go ahead to to basic 2d and go to scatter so you have a scattered plot in here for all the values you can also plot multiple y's in a scattered so you you have to come back to your book hold control and let's say add the second y which is c and then go to plot and because the numbers are low you see it here but you can have so many different because we didn't add comment it, it uses b and c as a legion and we'll do customizing graphs in the next section so don't worry about these but this is just to demonstrate how to plot scattered diagrams so make sure you have the names I won't delete them because we when we get to customizing graphs we'll pull up some of these to edit yeah so this was what i was talking about once you're in the graph window you you see graph right which will we'll learn how to customize in the next section but if you want to come back to plot you have to always select your workbook and then it changes to plot then the next one will be your column scatter so we we'll also talk about column column bars column and bar plots in another lecture but if you want to do column scatter you just select your y's 
which is your columns and go to plot then basic 2d and then column scatter so you see the columns are being selected for you. the other thing is it doesn't select x or y it just takes all the values and then plots them so if you want to let's say hide this value you come to object manager let's hide a and you can see that one is gone maybe we can zoom in okay and you can also zoom in um, this way and you can see it more to the side well we'll learn how to customize graphs so don't worry about that so that is what you do in scattered the next one is y arrow so you can come in here select the y's you plot and it will it will it will use the first y as your y value and the next y as your y arrow bars so you can generate your error bars on your scattered plot however you can also just go in and um, right click and go to set us and change to y arrow and now this has been changed to a y arrow you can select all of them go to plot and you can even plot a normal scattered diagram and it still gives you your arrow I'll delete this graph because it's just a duplicate to the other one and change this back to Y. The next tool is in scattered plot is your X and Y arrows. So this is when you want arrows both on the X and on the Y. Both on the X and on the Y. So you come in here and then you plot you have your um x values so this should be your x values set as x so you have your x values and you have your y so origin will take the next one as your y arrow and it will take the next y as your x arrow so you come in and then go to plot and you go to x and y arrow and there you go so you have error in the X and error in the Y. Another thing to note is you can just come in. Let's bring the graph around. Um, let's bring the graph around. You can come in here and let's say change this to one. And you, you see the changes right away from there. So just to show you can change numbers as you go and because you selected it during the plot is going to change. So let's restore it back. So this is your graph five. So next on the list is 2D energy band. So this is where you also plot an error bar however you want to have this band around it let's go to set as arrow y and let's make a plot and you get what i'm saying so you want to have an energy band around it so when the arrow is huge you have the band being huge and this is also a nice way of representing your data and i think it's something cool to know so if you have some scattered plot and where the energy band is big you have a huge error margin over there in your data so let's change this back to y because i don't know if we need it to so y the next on the plot will be scatter plus rag so saying you can come to x and select you can just select maybe x and y and then plot basic 2d 
just to know this is your recently used but this is where we are basic 2d and then come to scatter plus rag now this gives you the rag just gives you where it's located on the x-axis so it kind of can give you an idea of maybe this is evenly spaced this is close together as you depending on what information you need you may need this to explain your graph the next one is bubble which is also something cool to know so you can just go to plot and then go to bubble yeah you have to select to make this yeah you have to select so plot and then bubble yeah i got it wrong yeah so you need multiple y's the bubble also it kind of arranges the origin software kind of gets the smallest to the biggest and kind of smallest values and then kind of gives you which one so this is this is kind of a huge value this is a small value and it gives you sizes it uses sizes to give you kind of an idea of how your data looks like in a plot the next one will be we are almost there oh plot and then basic 2d will be your color map this is also same so what this does is it selects the first so this is your y values and the next y is kind of like you are using it to map your scattered diagram so which it's kind of arranges from the least to the highest let's let's do it this way maybe you understand me much better so let's rather select this so this is the map this is my y values this is my x and this is going to kind of define the colors of each so if we come to plot and we come to color mapped we see it's all the same color because you use this as 0.5 but once you start changing let's say this to one to two to three then the colors change as you go five or maybe 50 so the colors change along using you can use this to map your graph as well so that is something to note and finally finally you can also do bubble plus color so you just have a bubble and you can ha add a color to it as as we did before so this is going to be the same color you just come in and it will give you the same color and you can use it to map or change the colors as you want and desire the last thing about scattered diagram is you can also come to this toolbar and you have all the tools here for you so you don't have to oh i think i left one out which is very important you can also do a scattered central where when you plot scattered central it kind of gives you an x and y and your values your values are fit in there the difference is if you do just a normal scatter plot so if you go to graph plot and you do just a normal scatter see you only have your positive axis showing but this gives you like a central or the quadrant in the graph so what i was saying was you can have access to all the scattered tools in this menu and that is something cool to do so thank you and see you in the next lecture which we will learn how to do line plot This is the last lecture for section 4 
and we are going to explore how to use line plot so we've done scattered plot and this is line what we will do is just copy this data that we had in scatter plot copy and then we'll go to new so make sure you have this file because we'll use it a lot in customizing or we we'll use some of it so make sure you have it or maybe home exercises so make sure you have that so you just come to new project and yes save so choose workbook and paste so we are going to save this as line and there we go so in line plot it's just similar to scatter plot you just you just come to basic 2d and you see these so let's just start with basic line you can go to plot go to line and you connect lines and there you go in the same way you can also add many line plot to one graph so you can go in here and go to plot and you have different lines attached you can also let's select just two for the time being you come to basic two you can do steps so it gives you your plotting steps so these are steps it's the same thing for when we do it for this is horizontal but if we do the same thing for vertical steps we'll kind of get the same graph so we can do delete this one the next one is to do spleen so spleen gives you kind of a smooth edge done um horizontal which you have uh, done just line which you have these sharp edges but spleen gives you this kind of graph the next one will be to plot and then go to basic 2d then line plus symbol so you can come to line plus symbol and we'll do customizing graphs in the next section so there are so many things how you can customize these symbols you can change the symbols you can um, make it interesting the other interesting thing before i forget is you can also add error bars so you can make this set as y error and then come in here and then plot your line plus symbol and then add arrow to your symbols your arrow bars to your symbols yeah yeah so there are so many different things to, you can do with this i haven't tried this but let's it just came to mind let's see if this works as well okay no we don't have that okay that's fine so yeah you can also have this let's change this back to y so the next is a line series and it kind of connects the rows so it connects the first one which is let's say this one to this one and it connects so you can do those connections this is not the best way to represent it but that is kind of the idea we can maybe we can add a we can add a column some columns and we can try something more interesting so let's just copy we can copy this and and let's try it this way it's plot and line series 
yeah so yeah it starts from so actually it starts with the one so i think it will be best for demonstration's sake we can rather do it this way plot and then there you go so it just plots these two but if you do it this way it will also plot the x so it only plots a column it just ignores the x and you're just connecting lines from rows so if you do it this way it means it connected from one one to 0 0.08 to 0 0.5 but if you do it this way it means it connects from 0 0.08 to somewhere like 0 0.08 again so you have connections in lines the next one plot will be before and after which is also kind of the same approach it's, it's just kind of the same but what it does is if you have multiple plots so let's say we we add this one to it and then we go to plot um maybe we need four of them maybe four okay plot and then go to before and after then you have this is your before and your after and it just gives you some space and gives you another before and after so it's like this is your before so you can let's say change this to before and then and then change and this is your after section and it starts from 0 0.5 which is your before and your after so these are all kind of different looks that origin kind of gives you some kind of feel and the cool thing about origin is you can see what you will get so it makes it more easy for you to to work with um, let's continue with line segment so that can also be you can have two point segments which means it connects two points on your data yeah the same way you can also have plot and you can also have three point segment so now it's connecting three and finally you can also have a spleen connected so you can have a spleen that is connected to symbols and you can as we did before add arrow bars and you see the arrows in there and for line you can also come to the section and you have more lines connected in there so it's quite interesting what you can do with these tools and i love origin because it has many inbuilt tools for you and you can kind of see what you will get and just go for it so that will be it for this section we won't have any exercise for this section i'll just entreat you to get your own data maybe you have some data from work or from school you can play with the plot section you can play around it in the next section we will look at how to customize graphs so we'll look at how to make graphs more interesting customize your x-axis customize your layers change colors how to make your graph or your visuals very interesting so we'll see you in the next section hello welcome back to section five in this section we'll learn about customizing graphs origin gives us so much things to do in terms of graphs but also it gives us so many different ways of customizing our graphs and in this lecture we'll learn how to edit layers we'll go ahead and i've attached this file so you can go to xrd and i'll just entreat you to copy it so Control a and copy and come back to open and go to scatter so on scatter on the workbook just right click on sheet one and go to insert and paste 
so we have it all in here so we'll do most of our customizing graph in this window so just come to file save project as and rename it as customizing customizing should be fine yeah and save so what i want you to do is just select your x-axis and select your y and let's just do a normal line plot so come to basic 2d and choose line you have the set of plot but you should note that you can't i don't think this is how you want to show your plot in a conference or in a meeting or in your research paper so that is why we want to learn how to customize this plot you just have to double click on the axis it could be this axis or this axis so you just double click on it and it brings up the layer so we want to learn how to edit the layer but once the layer comes up because you double clicked on the horizontal axis the horizontal is selected if you double click on the vertical axis the vertical axis will be selected so let's start with the horizontal the first thing is your scale so you can change your scale remember that well, you can zoom in let's say to this side and you have this and you can always zoom out so you, you've changed your scale this way but this helps you to accurately change your scale so for instance you can change from let's say 10 to 20 and hit apply and you can see that it changes from 10 to 20 so that is a nice to um, to have I usually have it to 60 on this data set so it just covers everything or maybe to make it fun we can make it 40 yeah so you have it this way um, yeah so that I can have most okay so and you can also ha um, change your type so you have linear but you can let's say plot on the log scale and hit apply and then it changes to the log um, if you have let's see you want to plot on the reciprocal you just hit apply and it changes if you want to plot on let's say a, a log again the numbers change so that is one thing that you can also do easily using this the next one is the ticks so you have major ticks where the numbers are you can also choose by count by max so this is by increment but if you go to buy um, by count you can choose this by um, to maybe seven for instance and you will see a different result if you change it to um, whatever number that you change it to you see but i, I want increment um you have by five but you can change it to let's say by ten and the major things change to increments of ten let's get it back to five and you also have minor ticks you have by count you can change to let's say five and it divides everything into five for you and so this is you've chosen horizontal and you can choose vertical and change this as well so let's say we change this to minus 500 and we can also change this to let's say 6500 and hit apply you can rescale it that way and you can also once again change these functions hit apply it changes to the log scale so if you want to plot on the log scale and all that you can use all these if you can hit probability or you can hit linear and there you go so it's it's interesting um to do 
Yeah. Let's undo it. Yeah, so this was where we were. So it's something interesting that you can do. You just have to toggle in between. You can change the text and change all those numbers for the side. Vertical, let's say this is thousand. Maybe you want to change it to let's say two thousand instead. Thousand apply and you have less. So next is the thick label. So in origin editing the layers is kind of fun because you can let's say choose bottom which is this side and edit the label you can make it so this is numeric but you can make it text from data set you can change it to time you can change all these things you can also set decimal places you can divide by a factor so let's say if you want to divide this by two and hit apply it changes to five or um, 7.5 and up going you can also add a formula you can add a prefix a suffix you can also come in and format change the color to let's say red um, and all that using this um, using this so it's quite interesting change the alignment and all um, you can also um, enable tables a table um, so that it looks more like a table for you and you can make all these edits so it's it's quite interesting what you can do with it but once you edit one side you can also because this is a bottom you can check use same option for bottom and top and it just appears at the top and you can edit let's say the top as well or maybe edit the left and once you are done with it you can if you want the same thing at the other side you just check this box and it takes you to the other side so next on the list is title so this is same so you can the title is these comments that are around you can let's say let's start with bottom Oh, you can show it so it's showing if you don't show it a leaves but if you show so a usually is the title of your worksheet you know you have a b c so you have a b and you can use same as top and bottom if you want to you can change it to any text you can change the colors in here as well you can rotate it through many angles um, and all you can change the font and all so also you can also just come in and double click and change type whatever you want you can click it once you find all these tools in here you can hide it so it's it's quite useful what you can do in origin with editing your plot um, and once again you can show for top what you can do with bottom which makes it interesting so let's say you edit this and you want to use it same as a top you can just get it in there and there you go so the next one is the grids so if you want to use grid you have your major grid lines and your minor grid lines so first you can show and you have this you can change the colors you can also change if you want dash lines short dashes you can change the thickness of the grid lines yeah and you can also enable minor grid lines and you can so you, because we had five you can do it that way maybe make it black can change it to short dashes and change maybe the thickness so it's fun what you can do with your graph you can do a whole lot of this in the next which is a continuation we'll continue with the remainder so see you in the next lecture welcome back to editing layers 2 
we have successfully gone through scale, text, title, grid. Now we are moving to line and text. So the same way we can start with bottom and if we want to show the line. So if you, for some reason you don't want to show, you can take it off. But usually you want to show the line. But if for some reason you don't want to show, you can take it off. So that is bottom and you can so show you can change the color of the border lines to any color you can change the thickness you can so let's try color as well let's try blue and then you can change the axis position you can play with this one then you have the major ticks so do you want it in or out or in and out so let's say if you choose in and out you have the major text popping in and out if you choose in you have a major text coming in and you can also change the color for that one maybe you want this color for this so that is what makes origin interesting you can keep your major text out but let's say we want it in and let's choose let's say this color then everything comes in and if you want to do same for the top you just check this and there you go you have it in here so you can also come to the other side and do all these changes i'll leave these two out because there's not much i want to show over there the next one is breaks so you remember you can have a plot and maybe you want to break a section so let's say i want to show from 10 to somewhere like 22 so let's let's close this and maybe replot let's replot this again to make it interesting and then move to 10 to 22 on the horizontal and apply okay now we want to break let's say this is what we want to show but for some reason we don't need the space for anything so this is um, let's change the let's change the values to maybe two and then and then apply so we don't need maybe the information between 16 and 19 oh yeah 16 and 19 so we want to break it off then you can come to break and you choose the horizontal and you go to details you go to add and you can choose from 16 to 19 sometimes it kind of detects so you see when we came in it was kind of detecting something but and when you apply you see it's broken from there and you can kind of adjust this for yourself once you leave it and play with these values as well so it's it's quite interesting what you can do with origin so you can just go to okay so you have it in here so if for some reason you want to change it you can just double click and change the numbers in there and you can have multiple breaks so you can come in again and let's say you want to break from nine or maybe yeah maybe nine to ten no wait. you're gonna break from 10.5 to 11 just a little break to demonstrate 10.5 to 11 you can hit apply and you just have a small break in here and you can hit ok and there you go so there are many things that you can do but you should have added so i think that was what i left out so you should have been um, add a new one and we can have our 15 to 
think it was 19 let's just stick with 19 and then add so you, you have three different breaks oh yeah so you can delete this one then so okay so now you can see them showing in here and you can do same for vertical as well and come back in and edit it so that will be it for breaks which is useful if you have kind of a huge data and you have like space in between them and you won't use it for anything and you want your plot to be close enough you can break for whatever and if you remember we did rags so if you want to add rags to your plot you can go to show and just add and you can add rags you can go through this and edit your plot and add rags which we did previously in in i think it was line plot if i'm not mistaken so that is basically what you want to do so to end editing layers what i want to do is just this was a demonstration but i want to show you what i typically do if i have this data so i go to plot and i go to line then i start with scale and i choose the region of my interest so let's say i choose 10 and then that's 40 and hit ok on the horizontal and i come to the vertical and i choose minus 500 to let's say we can keep it at 7000 hit apply i like using apply as i go so i can see what i need and i can also choose the thicks the minor thicks maybe two instead and we can keep this to five so it becomes more interesting yeah and when i'm done with this i quickly move to i don't use grid but you can you know how to do grid now so i start with bottom choose black maybe thickness of three and in and in and hit apply so everything comes in and i do same for the top comes in and i go to the left side just choose same three in in and hit apply comes in and you do same for the other side which will enclose this so you have kind of something nice and you hit okay and let's say this is intensity so what you can also do is you can remember that you can come in here to thick labels or maybe title and rename each side so let's say the bottom you can name it in here but what i like is because i just label two sides i can just come in here and say this is this is let's say angle and you can add your units so you have the unit is 2 theta the way to do theta i use control m and it brings up about this and you have to fish out for the sign that you're looking for and you set and there you go and this is intensity So you can just type intensity and because this is intensity and if you don't need it, you can just select it and delete it and keep this side. You can edit this using, you can just select it and you can edit it, maybe bold, you can change the font. If you want to add the instance you can do that add colors you can also just select it and it becomes easy to change so you have something like this to work with so i just want you to try and do what i did and in the next lecture we will work on layer properties how to also customize your plot itself
and not the whole AI itself but the plot as well so in in the next lecture stay tuned we'll work with this that we have so see you in the next lecture hello welcome back to section 5 we will continue with the graph properties so uh, how to edit your data itself it's quite interesting what you can do in origin at this point you can just double click on the graph or the plot maybe you have multiple plots so there'll be a separate section for plotting multiple graphs together i mean i've shown some to some extent but you can just double click on the particular graph that you want to edit which will bring the plot properties and you can use this arrow if you have multiple graphs you can select and deselect these ones in there but for now let's hide it so what you can do is maybe this is too broad you won't see some of the features so let's zoom in a little bit to let's say 12 to 15 just to see more more effect in there you can just select this and, and drag it somewhere else so just double click on the plot itself and let's start with line so you have a straight line but if you want to make it a two segment you can apply if you want to make it a three segment you can apply it in here if you want to go through these um, you can select them if you even want no line which i don't know why you don't want any line but you can do that and the line style can also be chosen if you want dashes if you want um dots you can go in and do that but let me jump to width and make this three so we see some of the effects more elaborate so if you change this to dash you see it in there dash dash dot short dashes you can change your graph to look any way that you want and it automatically updates in the legend for you so that is that you can do um double so you can do triples so so many things that you can do with origin and that makes it more interesting to do yeah if for some reason you want to fill the area under your plot you can and it brings up this pop-up to show you a preview so you have a normal one then it gives you this you can change the color if you want i don't know if this is okay there's the border color but yeah yeah you can change the pattern color where we get there but um, let me just quickly run over there yeah so you can have um black yeah we have black you can change it to maybe green and you can add some patterns to it if you want you can add a gradient of two colors you can that means you can have a second color so let's say two colors you can add blue so it's interesting what you can do with origin you can change the width to let's say three so it's of the pattern to three so it's interesting what you can do with origin so you see how you can make your plot so colorful even here it's normal but you can have inclusive broken by messing value and it won't shade where they are missing values we can add exclusive you can add side so you can whatever that you need you can come in here and just test it and make it nice for your plot so that is why i still think origin is the best data visualization software you can change all these things that you want if you want to drop lines you can choose horizontal and maybe change the color to let's say purple apply so if you want your it, it'll, it's more noisy in here because you have so many data sets but if you want to have horizontal lines from your data point to the x-axis you can get it in there but this for instance gives you 
kind of idea where the density is of where your data points are so it's kind of fun what you can do with it another thing i want to show is let's say if you come back to graph 12 of this of the customize customizing graph 12 so if you come to project manager and choose graph 12 you can also click on it and let's start it this way so let's show the full thing so this shows that it's a scatter plot but you can change this to line even here and it connects to like a line you can also change so if maybe for some reason you plot it as a line but during editing you want to change it to scatter you don't have to go and replot it you can just come in here and let's say change this to scatter or change this to line plus scatter in there like that so on this point um let's hide this now you can change the symbols for your scatter now you see it's selected as this but you can come in here and play along with it you can change the size maybe it's too small for you you want it bigger you can change the unit size the edge thickness so so many things that you can do in here with with this and that is what makes it fun to work with origin and customize your graph to to be so unique and appropriate for for presentation so this will be it for this lecture and in the next lecture we will look into legends how to edit your legends and make it more interesting as well so see you we are going to continue our section studying legends and legends are very important tools in data visualization they help you to elaborate or point out to which data sets you are talking about so for instance you're seeing this one is labeled and you can it's very important that you know how to customize your legend and make it interactive and interesting for your audience so what you do is first you just select your legion you right click on it and come to properties this pop-up window will give you everything that you need for your legion so the first side is this side which is represented represents the symbol you can change the symbol when you come to, when you edit the plot so this is where you change the symbol so whatever that you change in here will represent what you have in your legion so when you come in here sorry let's go to properties again now you have this one this side represented now this side represents the text so this is b so you can change this to let's say high and you see it appears in here and just apply it other way is which i love is you can just select this and then double click and then you can also type whatever that you need in here so that is something cool to do for editing you can also do editing of your text in here you can maybe make it bold make it this is normal editing that you want to do you can make it italic you can have let's say a number and have a square root of it let's see where it goes so you can have all these in your legends in here and use these symbols to help you make it interesting the other important thing is you can also change the size of your legion you can come in and let's say make it 200 and it makes the size bigger 
you can manipulate this and play around with it the frame section which i find to be so cool is now you see it's a box but you can choose none then there'll be no frame around it you can choose shadow and use these menus to to um, change the border color if you want All right, i chose okay so i have to go back The shadow you can also change the color of the shadow so there are so many tools that you can use this legion properties to to change you can also change the positions and and all that or easily just come in and drag it to anywhere in the plot that you want the next thing would be to you can also add your own legion so for instance one way is to just come in let's say and then hit enter and you can type whatever you want if you want more room if you have more some maybe you want to put a title to it you can type something in here so you can move this around if you want but what I want to show is this so properties and then you can come in here add legion symbol and you can choose a shape or not maybe let's say a line and maybe maybe you want to talk about this black for some reason and you can add width and add so you have it in here so when you apply you have this line here you can also add some text to it so let's say you're calling it hello so you have to go all the way to the end and then type hello and hit apply and you have it in here so this can be edited and all so whatever that you want to make your legion however you want to make it look like you can do it in here you can rotate as well so it's it's a nice tool to have and origin gives you that flexibility and it's an interactive software so it makes it easy and fun so that will be basically it for this plot if you have a multiple plot I think we have one yeah we have something like this let's, let's choose this one so this time you have multiple legions and you can see there are different shapes but you can also select which one that you chose and change the symbol for each one you can make it the same if you want and you can also edit you can also edit this as you want so you have these two so it's the same way if you have multiple graphs you can edit this and move it around which makes it interesting to have so i hope this helps you and that will be it for this lecture see you in the next one we will continue our section by learning how to merge graphs so if you come to if you come to the project explorer section you see we have so many graphs i will advise that if you are doing any project you name your graphs so that you know what they are, each one is doing but let's say we have all these graphs and we want to merge some of them together so we come to graph window and then come to merge graph window and you can see that some graphs already have been selected so you, if you want to select more let's say all in project you should see all 13 graphs that we have here this will look a little crowded and difficult for you to see so let's just click ok and see how it comes up to be so you have it in here so you have all your plots on one 
but i wouldn't advise that you put 13 graphs maybe you need it for something but i don't think i would do that so you can you can do that and the cool thing is you can you see you can edit each one separately on the merged graph so let's let's try it again graph merge graph windows open and let's go in for everything again um, let's just reduce everything to three let's so let's choose this one this one and this one so there let's just delete let's just delete so you just go to remove and you are just left with three now you see in three you can you can come to arrange settings and change how it's arranged you can choose number of rows number of columns so let's say we choose number of columns as three and then we can choose number of rows as one you get it this way you can also go for three and one you get it that way so you can put multiple graphs together this way and you can just go through all these properties the spacing how to put spacing in between the horizontal the vertical gap so let's let's just make this double and see something see the spacing increases so what i will entreat you is you just go over these uh, you can change this to a portrait so if you're making it slim like this it's best to choose a portrait because now it's more expanded um, in the you can also choose specific dimensions because if you want to print to a specific paper or to something then you want to be precise with these things so it's it's a nice tool to know and that's why i wanted to throw it out there so you just click ok and now you have it in here so you can you can edit each one separately if you want so this will be so you see this one these are selected and you can change them in there so you have layer one selected you can make your changes or layer two you can make your changes and edit them together so that'll be it for this lecture and see you in the next lecture hello in this lecture we want to study how to add a graph to a graph and also study how to add a table to a graph this is very useful if you want to visualize your data or make it more interactive for your viewers so let's zoom out of this come to project explorer choose book one and then in book one come to sheet two so you see this data which we saved as xrd before but note we have it in a customizing file that we saved together so select the first three columns and then plot and then come to basic 2d choose line so the reason why someone would want to add a plot to a plot is if you have a huge if you have a huge plot which with a huge x-axis for instance it's difficult to know what is going on in here so maybe you want to still keep it and say oh this pattern is kind of the same it's almost similar but if you zoom in the intensity is different then you want to maybe add one plot of just the section in here and it's something that i see a lot of people do so the way you do it is you just hold control key and then come to the tools toolbar come to scaling and click scaling still holding the control key you select the area that you want to add to the graph and then a new enlarged window will pop up 
which will be here too for you so you have an enlarged window so what you do is you click on it or select it and then control c and then come back to your graph area and then do control v to paste so now you have that graph in here the enlarged area you can zoom out of it yes so you can zoom out of it there you go and if when you're zooming out if you want to keep everything you, you just hit control and still zoom out and you keep everything that you have but what what is interesting is this is a dynamic plot so you can come in and edit it like a usual plot within a plot so you see this plot is selected as layer 2 within your plot if you go back to layer 1 now you can edit your previous one so it's kind of something very interesting that you can do using origin just to elaborate on one plot so you see in this plot is it's difficult to see what is going on in here but now you can tell the story because you can see that the intensity is bigger so your peak is has higher intensity at c than at b and your viewers will get what you're saying and once you you are done you can close the enlarged one and this shaded area goes away so now you have your plot the next one that i want us to learn is how to add a table to your plot you may also need a table to maybe have a summary or have some figures shown what you do is you come to the add object toolbar if you don't have it remember you can go to view toolbars and you can look for it add object to graph toolbar so you can get that here so that is this one and then the last one is create a link table and this is our graph 15 the number of columns let's say two number of rows let's choose two we can add a title as let's say hi and we can show labels we can add a table name as well let's keep it this way so here we go this this is this is our table you can zoom in zoom in a little bit so you, you have more room for it so if you want to add whatever contents that you want to add you just double click on it it brings you to this table window and let's just say we are going to write one 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 and then you hit update and it shows in your graph and you can take it back to your graph so now you have it in here you can come in also and change the dimensions and change things around it so it's something very useful to do however you want to plot you can use some of these features to make your data visualization very interesting so thank you and see you in the next lecture in this lecture we will study on how to set a plot theme origin provides us with a default theme but maybe you're working on a project and you want to work with a particular theme as in you make any um, adjustment to your layers and anytime you plot you want origin to bring up that theme there's a way of doing that so you don't you don't keep editing every plot that you do so i'll just say go to project explorer go to book one we are still in customizing file and then in book one go to sheet two and in sheet two select a and select b and then plot so come to plot basic 2d and select this so this is the basic theme that origin gives you 
most likely this is not what you want to go for with whatever projects that you're doing maybe um, you want to do a repeat so what you have to do is get your own theme so you just come in here and you can set this to maybe five sets this to five as well apply And then come in here you don't like the way it looks so you start with bottom we change this to three it changes to in changes to in Hit apply and you do same for the top then you come to the left side you change this to three you change this to in you change this to in you hit apply and you do it for the right side so let's say for demonstration this is the theme that you want to work with so anytime you make a plot you want it to look like this then you right click in the workspace and come to save format as theme then when you come in this is already saved as theme one so we saved as theme 2 yours will probably be theme 1 it's just the same so what we want to do is we want to save this template as custom custom so let's go to custom and then we want to insert as a system theme and go to ok so once you're done come back in and you take any plot let's say we plot and see go to basic 2d and there you go so when you are plotting you don't have to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again you can customize your layers or your plots and it save the theme So if you want to delete a theme or select a different theme, now you've saved this theme. So if you want to delete this theme or select maybe the previous theme, you go to preferences and you go to theme organizer. So in theme organizer, you can delete some of these ones. You can delete custom that we did or you can also um, have it let's say you have some other ones you can just select but if you go to theme one that is the default one that origin gives and you can just apply it so this brings us to the end of customizing graphs so i want to show the next exercise which i will show the solutions in the next section the exercise I want you to import xps so i have this file attached so make sure you get it and open the excel and import it into origin then use line using line i want you to plot all the columns so just select all the columns and, and plot them and then so the first one is an x-axis but the rest are y's then set the x axis range from 800 and 8, 580 to 570. So note this is from big to small, which is usually the other way around. And then y axis from 500 to 1200. Once you follow this, you will get through it. But I want to quickly show how it will look like so that you don't get lost. Uh, I already have the solution. Then and I have XPS in here. So well, let's just save it. So this is what I want you to do. You have all these files, get this one as X and then come in. And once you follow the instruction, you should get something like this. What I want you to note is after you plot, all these are the same. So I want you to change I want you to change the line for each one so you just have to come to style 
and change for each one of it but before you can do that you have to come to group so at group there's independent as the and there's dependent usually it comes up dependent it means once you make a change it changes all of it so be sure to select independent before you make changes so that was one thing i wanted to throw out there and just have fun with this you can do more editing beyond this this is just to practice and get you comfortable in origin so see you in the next section before we start the section we want to go through our previous exercise in this exercise we start by importing xps so make sure you have this xps in the attached files so import xps into origin and using line plot all columns with the first being the x-axis and then set the x-axis range from so let's just start with this so we'll set this range we can also change the border thickness to three on all sides and also make the major and minor ticks come inward so let's let's do the first five here we go so this is the file just come in and and then go to plot go to basic 2d and plot so we have it nicely we have our legion um, generated for us and then come click on the x-axis and we said we should set it from 580 to 570 so the first thing we've learned in the assignment is we can actually flip because remember it's starting from 560 upwards but we are starting from um, backwards so the biggest on the other side so it flips um, the graph for you and and on the y we said we should keep it to minus 500 to yeah thousand five hundred fifty yeah thousand fifteen thousand sorry fifteen thousand so yeah that is that is that and then we should change everything to three thickness and the style should be in so apply and do it for all the other sides apply and come to let's say bottom choose three in in by and do same for the top so we are we've done the first five so quickly so we are done with the first five now the six is we should rename the axis the x-axis as binding energy and um, the y as intensity and that is easy to do so let's look at seven go to the plot details by double clicking on any of the data you have plotted go to the group tab and select independent also um, we should set the width of each data plot to three and then change the plot style for all the plots meaning the legion will be different for each plot so so we should first of all change this to binding energy electron volt and change this to in 10 city and then we said we should select any data plot so it could be any one of them the one thing about plotting in bulk is uh, when you plot everything together they are dependent and it chooses these colors for you 
these dependent colors for you which you can change so for instance um, we it has chosen i think the default is q13 something but you can choose any one of these color batches let's say we are choosing a thermometer so this is how it's gonna look like for all of it but we'll stick with this one we have to choose independent because we want to change each one of them if you choose dependent let's bring this one back here and we come to line and let's say we change this to a dash everything changes to a dash so that is why we have to come to independent and then apply it then you can select each one so let's start with b and then you come okay the other thing is because we wanted to make the thickness three i will choose dependent and then go to line and change because i want all the lines to be three and apply so i'm done then i i start with this come back to group independent apply hit ok and let's start so you go to line let's choose the first one which is b come to the line section let's choose a straight line and apply um i want to see what happens so we chose b um a straight line sorry solid so you want to change the styles that was the question the question was change the plot style for all the plots so we've changed this one to solid so we change this one to solid then i want you to come to the next one and change it to dash so that is unique the next one change it to let's say dot so you see that all the legions can be different so that someone will see which one you're talking about you can also change this to dash dot okay now we already done that so we dash dash dot and then you can keep changing and, and changing finally we can also change this to that so this was what i was talking about this was how i wanted you to do it so we are done with eight next one was we should change all the names of the legions from e c d e f g h to one two three four five six and seven and finally we should add a fill area under the care for plot one we should choose inclusive broken by mason values and then we should change the color of the area you have shaded and and add a pattern so let's start with the legion we come in we should change this to so we should change this to one the other way that you can do it is just come to properties and maybe change this to two change this to three change this to four and you see it, it keeps changing as we are going change this to five change this to six and change this to seven so there you go so you can come to object manager and select b so you see the others go away and you can select c and this one goes away you can sell it so you see you can see the changes okay d goes this way and you can also see that for demonstration and finally we wanted to add a fill to one so i will just select one and just check the fill area under curve and you so said we should choose inclusive broken by and i'll just hit apply so already a color has been chosen but i don't like this color so you can come into pattern and it's black so you can choose maybe something fancy let's see which one looks more fancy something like this should be fine and you can 
just play with this so that was the last part you can also choose a you can also choose a pattern so it was none but you can choose whichever pattern that you want and you can choose a pattern color that you want like it's so convenient what you can do in here you can choose the width of the pattern so it was something that i just wanted you to play around and see once you change it it also gives you the shaded area so that was all for the assignment and i believe this has given you an idea of what you can really do with origin how you can manipulate and represent your data i believe so far you you've gained confidence and have control over your data so see you in the next lecture where we will go into the plot we want to finish the 2d plot so we'll demonstrate many of these so see you welcome back to section 6 in this section we are continuing with 2d plot and in this lecture we'll learn about columns and bars columns and bars are useful for your data visualization many people use it if you come to plot and then you come to basic 2d you see the columns and the bars in here so these are very useful in terms of data visualization and before we start we need some data so let's generate one you come to columns and then fill columns with a set of numbers and let's go with 1 to 50 from 1 to 50 and an increment of 5 and let's choose repeat so we have and then choose the repeat times as 1 1 so we have a total number of 10 so you have 10 so you have 1 6 11 in here and then let's come to column b and then go to columns fill columns with and come to a set of numbers and let's choose the same but this time random and go ahead and click ok most likely your random numbers will be different so don't worry but however let me save this file so that i'll attach it to the resources and you can also use mine if you want to so let's save this as column columns yeah, columns should be fine so let's select this and come to basic 2d and go to columns so this is your columns and this is how it looks like this is very basic but you can customize it very nicely for your visualization and what this means is that if you come to your x-axis you have one six so you have one you have six you have eleven you have whatever you have in here and then at one you have a magnitude of one so you see one at six you have a magnitude of 46 at 11 you have a magnitude of 41 so that is what you're doing but as i said this is very basic and we've learned how to customize graphs and it's the same way you just can double click on the axis and it brings you in here you can for instance change this from minus 5 to let's say minus 55 and oh wait sorry it should be positive 55 that is wrong yeah so you have some more room in there this is not centered the major things are not centered so you can also change where the major things are using this section this is by increment so you can maybe come to custom and choose a position maybe choose sheet a because that's your x-axis and it changes to that you can change your minor text as well to if you want five you can do that whatever that you need you can do you can add grades you can you can 
change the the borders and all as we've shown in customizing you can also double click and then the plot properties show up so you can change the border color so let's say red apply you can change it to dashes you can change the thickness to maybe four if that's what you want you can so this is dashes you can change to short dashes and all whatever that you want to do in here and then the fail colors can also be changed this can be changed to let's say gray or you can add a gradient fill to it two colors maybe oh this is none so two colors maybe you can add green to it so however you want to do it is up to you you can add patterns to it and it's just the same way you can customize this graph any way that you want you can also come to space and add or customize your spacing and and all that another thing is when you double click you select all of it so if for instance you want to change or customize each column what you do is you 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 click on it till you select it so now you've selected this one the others are highlighted and then you can double click on it so now you you've selected just this column to edit so let's say we want to change the fill color to blue and green and apply and now you have this one to be different you can maybe put this gradient off and you have all blue so you can edit each one differently as well So the next on the list is so let's select this so yeah and come to plot basic 2d and add label so the label just adds or labels that for you however you can do a simple plot and then You can do a simple plot and also come to label and enable enable apply and it shows yeah so let's uncheck it you can also select just one and add a label to that as well so it's something interesting that you can do in origin how you can customize all these graphs easily the next is let's go to plot basic 2d and you can see bar over here so bar is just the inverted or let me say it has been flipped 90 degrees so if you compare these two it's just the same but it has been flipped so that's the difference between the bars and the columns some people want to represent your data this way maybe you have yes and you want to maybe talk about profit some people want to represent it this way some want to represent it this way it's, it's up to you but you can do all those customizations the same way so let's come to, back to book and go to plot and you can also do stacked columns so um, stacked columns is let's just add another layer and add another column and i'll explain so let's go to add columns and add maybe 10 and in this column let's do some math let's do 0.5 times oh wait that is undo let's do 0 0.5 let's do 0 0.5 times column b hit enter so now we've halved these values so let's select all 
and then come to plot go to basic 2d and go to stack columns so yeah this is how it looks like uh, let me zoom in a little bit so what this means is you have let's let's use two so you have six as your x-axis and at six you can also rename this if you want you can just delete it and add text and maybe put another name or something in there so at six you have 46 as your first column and the next column you have 20 over there but because of the colors you can it makes it interesting so maybe for instance you have the year 1990 and you made profit in the first half you made this profit in the next half you make this profit so the way you visualize your data maybe the next time you're seeing that the first half of the year you're making more profit or maybe the other way around in the holiday seasons you are making more profit compared to the other half of the year so these are all ways of representing data you can do same you can do same for stack bar but it's just flipped the other way around so i'll end the first part of columns and bars in the next lecture we'll do part two so see you we are going to continue with what we're doing in the previous section so let's go ahead and select okay let's see what we have next we have so we've done columns column plus label bar you've done stacked so we are going to do 100 percent stack so this is interesting what this shows us let's say we we select x and y and we go to plot we go to basic 2d and we go to 100 percent stack so what this is showing is that every column is going to be 100 percent so now let's look at this let's let's just delete this one and now add this column go to plot go to 100 percent stack so this is this is just showing percentages so this is going to show that the first one which is one has one and 0 0.5 so it means if you add both is 1.5 and if you have one divided by 1.5 you have about 66.77 so it's just estimated to 67 so one third so this is one third of it and this is two thirds so it's just giving you percentages of that if we add another column let's just make this copy and then this let's just do control v in here paste and let's go in and do stack again plot basic 2d let's go into 100 percent stack now you have 50 25 25 and you can go in and edit let's say this section you can also so you can edit them independently or dependently so if it's dependent it means everything that you do will affect all of it in that way you can add connector lines to them as well you can you can do a whole lot of things with that so instead of bars let's say connect line to all you can do a whole lot of things with that add patterns change spacing so this is also another way of representing your data and if you come to plot you can do same for the bars so this is for columns these are for bars so this is a nice way of representing your data as well and it gives you a legion of and this is um, let me just think of this so maybe you have profit in uh, you've divided a year into three so you have profit in the first third is maybe 50 percent the next third is 25 percent 
data is 25% and this is the best way of representing that you can come in and also edit how these look and all so these are some of the nice things that you can do using bars and columns let's let's take a look at the next one plot basic 2d let's go with floating columns so for floating columns that is also quite interesting you select um, let me just plot and then i'll explain what it means so you come to floating columns now your, your columns are floating which is kind of cool so what this also means is so i plotted these two y's so what that means is you have your x-axis so you have one six eleven here and, but when you come to this axis it just origin just chooses the minimum and the maximum and plots them as a float as a floater so here you have 0 0.5 to 1 here you have 23 to about 46 in at 11 you have all the others in there for you 40 to this point for you so these are like floating bars that you can also use depending on whatever way that you want and you can edit them the same way that we've done if you want to edit them separately you can go ahead and do that let's continue to plot and basic 2d and you can also have so these are floating columns that's what we've done you can also have floating bars the last one is vertical drop lines um, let's let's go ahead and select these two again go to plot basic 2d and go to vertical drop line and that is also interesting it's just like stacked let me look at the name again column plot is something like stacked columns but using vertical lines so you have you have let's use six here for illustration so at six you have the black to be 46 and then this to be 23 at 11 you have 41 and you have the red to be so that is that is what you can do so you see the um, legion shows that you have b so your origin b is your black but you can change these you can edit the legion as you want as well you can double click choose independent and and edit each one separately or you can choose dependent and edit as a group so these are some of the nice things that you can illustrate using origin so the final thing i want to show you won't you won't most likely find it here but if you come to this side the draw uh, the 2d toolbar and then you will see the grouped columns indexed data grouped columns indexed data so what you can do with this is also quite interesting maybe you want to group some columns together this is the best way to do it so let's let's try this let's try this let's copy let's just copy this to this side and paste it and now we want to add some text to it so let's call this a a a a a and let's call this b b and let's call this c c and let's call this d d and d and when we come to this side let's call this um, let's call this maybe f f f f and call this g update one g g g and h and h something like this now what you can do is you can select the column right click 
and then come to set us and go to disregard because you're just adding text right click set us disregard so you see what we are trying to do in here so let's select um, a column and then come to this arrow and choose group column index data so it's selected so once you've selected it so you're going to have something like this but you're grouping the data together so once you select something like this you want to select your, your groups so group one let's choose f which is this one will be our group one and then the next one will be group g and let's just go ahead and hit okay so it, it gives you because we chose an output to be a new sheet it gives us an output on a new sheet so what this is doing this also can help you to group so let's see what is happening in here what is happening is you have some groups okay so you've grouped a, 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 and F, F, F as one group. So this is one group in a, and it's showing this bar for them. And this is another group. So maybe you want to show profits of your job with every department. So let's say you can have department, maybe health here. What you want to show is that this department health, and then you have some subdivision in the health department so you can maybe group this differently so that some of these things overlap but we'll have an exercise that looks like this so watch out for that yeah so this was something else that i wanted to show but our exercise will be around this so we'll do a more practical example or a more meaningful example so that will be it for columns and bars. See you in the next lecture. In this lecture, we'll learn how to plot pi, donut, and chi chart or plot. Uh, let me just go in there and you have a so you come to basic 2D and we are going to learn how to do these pi charts and these donut and also kite. An origin gives us so much flexibility with how to visualize all these data. So we start with this data point that are randomly generated. Let's just go to file and then and then save us. Let's call it pi. So pi is p and then d and then k. So pi do not kite. And I'll attach this Excel as well. So you can if you don't want to type it in. You can just use the excel and import it so let's begin so the first one is our pi so let's just select the first two a and b and go to plot and go to basic 2d and go to 3d pi chart so this is what we have and let's zoom in so okay the first thing is I like the way origin is dynamic you can just come in here and let's say for health type 7 and it changes so you can always customize what you have in here let's zoom in now so you have this pie chart this is also basic you may want to edit it so what you do is the first thing you want to do is you just click once and there are some basic things that you can do like fill color border color you can rotate clockwise you can rotate you can also show data labels so now you're seeing percentage you can choose you can change to values you can change to categories you can go ahead and edit range and settings so you can do all these things um, in there yeah you can have all these things here 
and you have your legion which also corresponds so you can edit them as well so we'll go ahead and just double click and it, it brings up the plot details so there are so many things that can be done here you can start with let's say the border you can start with the border pattern you can change now it's white you can change that you can go ahead change the style you can change the width so just like our usual customizing you can do all these change the fill so the fill is changing by point but now you can also go to single so oh, every, everything can be done in there with these editing tools adding pattern and adding that so now you've chosen the bulk you can also select just one side of it so you select let's say this section and double click and now you can customize just that one and it will, it will help so the other thing that can be done is just double click and then you can come to the pie geometry so now this is a 3d view if you want 2d you can just type 90 in there as a saying and it just changes it to 2d for you you can also change the view so maybe if you want 45 uh, you can do that so the other thing is um when you're plotting 2d if you come to plot the next one will be basic it will be 2d so it's just the same way you can plot 2d or 3d but once you come in to to pi geometry and change it it will change you can change the thickness let's go extreme so now you've changed the thickness you can do that if you want this, if this is how you want to represent your data you can do that and you can just play with some of these things you can change the rotation so you don't like maybe you want more of these side to show you can change the rotation as you want and uh, you'll get that you can also explode if you want so let's say you want to explode technology you can explode that and you can change the displacement maybe you can change it to 50 and you can explode that as well so this is why i like origin it's very flexible for you you can add um labels to it so first of all you can also change the font and all that you can change these editors you can check this and add values which 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 are your data sheets or add categories in your data sheet so you have r d and all you can also add lead leader lines so this connector is a straight line let's change it to a three segment and let's change the thickness to maybe three hit apply you can go back to okay and drag it around if you want so so many ways of customizing your graph and that is why i love origin because you can do all these things using origin and note you can do same for the 2d section the next one will be plot and then basic 2d and you also have a donut so that is the same you just select plot if you want to make a donut plot that is up to you so it's the same it's just a donut you have these and all these things can be customized as well you can double click go to pie geometry maybe you can change the whole color as well and wedge thickness can be applied and let's let's see if the 3d works yeah so i don't think the 3d will work for that approach so take note of that but that is all about donuts it's just the same way but it's it's just gonna give you a donut plot the next will be the pie of pie which i love so it's the same way now if you want to blow this section up so you have health to be 36 r d engineering 
and you have at 12 then it shows you this side maybe called something else now you have maybe ai and now you have ai in ai you have eight percent of of this to be to be automobile and the rest to be technology so you can also edit it you can come into wedge and let's say you want to add add to it uh, to that you can just apply and then now this changes to 32 and you have at included to it maybe you want to add more it's, it's up to you you can also do that in there and the rest of the editing are just the same you can customize each of them and once you change to 3d once again i believe it will go away so let's try yeah so it will go away for that so make sure you don't do that yeah the next one will be plot basic 2d and bar of pi so it's the same instead of a pi of pi now you have a bar instead of a pi and you can use that to blow so you can edit this as you want the next one will be plot and basic 2d you can also have a pie of a donut so when you blow this up note you can change it to whatever one that you want maybe you want it to blow out okay so you want to blow out maybe health and automobile there you go now you've blown it out so and you can customize them to be more interesting as we've done and finally go to plot basic 2d you can have pi with different so different you can change you can customize this too to have it's not like in one circle you can have it this way and edit it and you can also have do not with different way so so let's say yeah kite is also important you can come in and kite is more like a density plot where the highest is like bigger so health is the bigger portion of it and then you have maybe automobile as the least so it gives you kind of like a kite plot and you can come in and edit them also which is which is a nice tool to have so that being said that will be it for pi donut and kite and i believe this has given you an idea of how you can make your you can visualize your data and make it so interesting um, if you put this in a conference paper or in a presentation uh, your your viewers will be more excited the last lecture for this section will be area plot and to do that i have this data set called major electricity i have attached it to the resources for this lecture so make sure you download it and get it into your worksheet and let's move along so what we want to do is just select all of these so you have major electricity in us from 1950 in terms of gigawatt to 2018 and you come to plot go to basic 2d you have area so this shows you the area so let's say in 1990 if you draw a line here you can see that the others start creeping in you can see that in 2018 solar is starting to get more traction and and also wind and you can edit them just like we, we always do you can edit them independently or independently you can add more to it change the areas and all so you can basically do same using the line but once you come in here you can just add fill but it also it will be so difficult to do it or time consuming so it's always easy so we can easily change this back to line 
and then kind of fill it in there so you can also consider that next will be let's select everything again plot and go to basic 2d stacked area so this for this one it is stacked on top of it so you have the absolute for the first one and the next one is stacked on it so you can you can you have to do like the subtraction to get the absolute value but this also is a nice way of representing so you can easily see maybe if you draw a line through one year you can blow it out and see um, what, what, what you have let's see let's choose 1990 to 2000 maybe that will help 1992 so we're just choosing 10 years and blow it up and you can still see what is in there so these are all cool things that origin has let's move to the next which will be stacked 100 percent so this is also in terms of percentages and you can see that it's almost 100 percent for was it what was that was it hydro yeah i think hydro and is is changing so you can edit these and make them nicer i think we can do stack in a y-axis so this can also be a stack so instead of plotting all of them together you can have a stack and from the stack you can maybe choose scatter and choose symbols whatever you want to do with it we've done more in lines so that is also one thing that we can throw in there yeah so i i use this for a presentation and I, from this data i was able to make it so nice i just took the data from online and i plotted it myself instead of taking the upload i plotted this myself and used it in my presentation and it was nice so you can try this using this data maybe for yourself you can just try and make it something nicer than this and i think you can so that will be it for the lecture on area plot the next will be our exercise for this section so for assignments let's go to open and go to exercise 2 let's save it yes so for the assignment i'm also going to attach exercise 2 i just want you to import this into origin and from whatever that i give you i want you to go in and maybe i should zoom into this so you have this just get this into origin and this time i'm not giving instructions because i think you have more experience now and try and do something like this it may not necessarily be perfect or the same but try and see if you can do this so for a quick note this is i've set this to an error bar and maybe to give you a hint all i want you to do is come to the grouped column index data and get this so you have sample sample in here you have the you have the grain size here a contact angle this way so it's not anything difficult but i'll also show the solution in the first lecture of the next section so thank you and see you in the next section In this section, we will learn how to do multi-panel and access. But before we go into it, we want to solve our previous exercise. So let's get started. 
so in this exercise we're taxed to to reproduce this or something close to this and from this data so we had this data and we're tasked to reproduce something like this so let me just copy this and go to a new workbook and paste and then yeah okay we can just keep it this way maybe we can also copy this and come in here okay so we have this and this is our standard deviation so this will be our error bars the first thing is to set this to your y arrow and you can come in choose your y and your y arrow and come come over to group columns index data so we've already selected our columns the next is the group columns so the first group is our a the next is our b so a will be the sample size which will be here and then b will be the grain size which will be here and we can even preview to so or you could put it on auto preview and anything that you change you see the changes so you can see this already so we have something like this so this is basic but we want to move from here to something like this so the first thing i note i notice is there is sample two sample three sample four sample one but I have sample 1, sample 4, sample 3, but it's not showing, and then sample 1. Okay, do I have 3 in there? Yes, okay, maybe it will show. So you want to correct that. You just double click on that, and it, you can see that it's just been flipped. So you can type 8.5, and then from 8.5 to 0 0.2, 0 0.5 and hit apply and it flips the next is um, let's just go in and change the border the plot border is, is boldened so you can come into lines start with bottom and change this to three and hit apply let's see it and then the top is also changed so you can come to the top change it to three and hit apply come to the left side change it to three and then in and then in the major and the minor ticks and hit apply and you can do same for the other side and hit apply so now we are getting there okay so the next is we can also change the sample just click on it and hit bold so we've changed the the text to bold and this is inverted so we can also click on it and then flip it around i think once should work so that is that is that you can also come in to click on this and go to graph and you can always fit graph so let me zoom this one in you can always come to graph and then if it's going up beyond it or you're not seeing something you can go to fit layers to page or maybe fit page to layers which whichever one works let's try fit page to layers so 
so you can come in and, and change that and we can also reduce this to maybe 16 so that everything shows in here yeah okay what i see is that the error bars are red so i will come in let me zoom in so let's change this to three and then i think red and that was it so we are getting there we are almost there so the next is the colors were kept but there are patterns that have been added so if you want to select just one column you can click once and then click again and if you want to go away just click so you can just click once wait a few seconds and then click again and then click again then it selects but if you want to edit all of them together you just have to double click and everything shows so what i see is for everything together the the column thickness is somewhere like three and then you can close so looks like the remaining things are oh we didn't label this so we just have to go in for contact angle and then hit ctrl m and choose that and you can also bold in it okay so looks like we have to quickly add the pattern so i will select this one and then go to pattern and choose the first one so i'm going to choose it this way so choose the first one and hit apply and there i go so let's select this one come to pattern select the next one there you go come to the next one select pattern next there you go next one select pattern and apply there you go come to the next one select pattern and it's it's getting fun maybe we should have left that one blank but that's what i'm saying you don't it doesn't have to be precise it's just for demonstration so and finally this one so let's say there's something odd or maybe this was a bad idea but this is how it's it, it's done the last thing is to add labels to the center yeah labels and enable labels and the position so if you hit apply you see the position is outside end but you want to bring it to the center apply and in the center you want to add a frame so let's add a box frame and make the fill white and apply oh wait, that's the frame okay the fill should be white the border should be uh, the border can be white but the fill should be white as well or none it depends on you uh, let's just choose none so we can also change the size maybe to 14 apply and now it fits me so that is it So the first lecture of section 7 will be 
multi y axis so make sure you have this file it's called major electricity as we've used previously i'll once again attach it as a resource to this lecture so it becomes easy for you to download again if you are starting off from this side if you go to plot and you come to the multi panel or multi axis you can see some of these so the first one we want to do are the multi y axis ones so the first one is a double y column if you put it on it um, let's just start so i've selected a portion of my x-axis and then a portion of uh, and then hydro and then also biomass if you come to plot and then you come to multi-panel axis come to double y then you can see you put the two together the green is for biomass and the orange is for hydro and you can edit it as we've done previously you can do all those features you can edit each one separately if you want or you can edit the each different column differently the next thing will be so you can go to plot you can go to plot and multi-panel and double y axis so you can plot two selected worksheet y columns so let, when i plot it you understand you have x and then you have two y's so usually you have x and y or if you plot x and on a line you have the same axis but this time you see so you come to plot and multi panel and double y so you have the black which is hydro and you have from 100 to 400 so that is the scale however for biomass you have from 0 to 70 so that is a scale so now you have two more you have a multi or a double axis in here and you can and it shows us two different layers so you have to edit them differently and you can imagine what you can do with this you can color them or change anything in there and the next will be plot and so you can do same for three four four and and all that so it's just the same as we've done with the double let's go back let's say we choose one two three and we come to plot multi let's choose three y axis so you can zoom in now you have b as black so that is your black axis and then you have c as and you can drag it anywhere that you want let's say for some reason you want to keep it all in one direction or one section then you have different things to to talk about so this this can also be a way of representing your data or visualizing your data and you can actually choose it for let me just go in there again plot multi panel so you can go for five or more you, then you have to come to multiple and you can put an auto preview and choose whatever that you want if you want many let's say you're plotting 10 i don't know why someone will want it but you have that option so something to note so let's go to plot again and multi-panel i think i left this one out so this one you should you have to have two columns two y columns and it's also something useful plot and then multi-panel and come to two y's so this is too crowded so maybe i should select a portion and it will be more clearer so let's just select a little portion because it's too crowded sometimes it becomes difficult to see and go to this one okay 
so what this does is one of it is a column so the first y origin plots it as a column for you and the other y origin plots it as a line so you can edit the line separately because that's a different layer and you can also edit the columns differently and it gives you a scale bar for or the axis sorry it gives you the axis for the column and then it also gives you an axis for the line so that is something useful that you should note and that will be it for multi axis for multi y axis see you in the next lecture in the last lecture of this section we will deal with multi panels let's come back to our workbook so we are still in major electricity come to plot multi panel you have two vertical so let's let's just select the first two and then go to plot multi panel and move to two vertical so I plot two verticals for us so one is here one is here and you can edit them differently which is a nice thing to do so once you can edit this one separately and you can choose the other one and also edit it all the editing that we've done all the customizing that we've done count to this section so the next one will be let's go to plot and multi panel and two horizontal so the other one was vertical this is horizontal and that can be done you can change the scale no we can change these so that it doesn't look this way the next one will be column oh wait sorry plot multi panel and you can do four panel nine panel so it's the same you just have to select if you select two it will leave the others blank so you just have to make sure you select four of those the interesting one that i use a lot is stack so you can come to plot and then more tire panel and then stack so stack just you can put in an auto preview and it stacks everything together for you so you can go ahead and stack it and you can go in and edit this so this is one layer this is one layer this is one layer this is always great if you're comparing things this way and yeah that is stuck you can edit this and you know, customize it to look like what we've been doing and you can also remember you can save the theme if you're gonna do multiple stacking you can save the theme yeah you can also have more multiple panels just go to auto preview and there you go you can have that so that'll be it for this section which is more type panel and axis is very useful for whatever you want to do so to end this section i have a i'll have an assignment so i'll go to open and go back to xrd let's save this okay so in this xrd which you already have but if you don't have it i'll attach the resource to this lecture so make sure you have it so what i want you to do is take the data just take any three columns i took b d and f and come in and do this so just using the previous lecture you should be able to do this and customize your graph to look this way so that will be the exercise for this section in this section we'll do more on statistical plots 
however we have an exercise that we have to solve and we were taxed to reproduce something like this or something close to this from the xrd file let's get into it so we can select our x select b select d and select even l something and come to plot multi panel or axis and go to stack so you have this pop-up you can see that this is portrait maybe you want to go with landscape and you can go through this and play around with it but always make sure you have auto preview so you see what you're gonna get and hit ok so once you have this this is the built-in template that origin gives but we want to customize to something like this and that is the work so we want to first of all delete these and then rename this to intensity ten city and also come in here and call this to control M and theta and we don't need this so you can just select and hit delete on your keypad you can also drag this to the middle section which is fine and drag this to the middle section and this was called sample one so we can just type sample one and go in here and make this sample two come in here make this sample three so we want to also edit the the axis so let's start with this side so you can see that the ratings are selected you have one 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 which becomes your layers so let's start with the horizontal let's change this to 10 and then 40 and hit apply and everything changes let's come to align and fix we have our bottom layer let's make it three apply and we don't need sometimes you don't want to confuse yourself so you can come back and just re-click and make this three apply and you can do it for the other side apply you can also come in here and come to lines and ticks make this three apply and finally the uh, other side so that is how you do that it's a little bit tasking but it'll be worth it for your presentations and then finally apply you can also do the top side and come in and make it three and hit apply so once you're done you don't need this so just select it and hit delete on your keypad select it and hit delete on your keypad The next one is just select the first plot and the color is black but the thickness is 3 and you hit OK. So this changes. This one is red. So select the color to red, the thickness to 3 and hit OK. 
select this one to blue and a thickness to three and hit OK. And finally, what you want to edit will be your legend. So select it, come to properties and come to frame. You already have a box, so choose the same color and make it three. And hit OK. Oh, wait, yeah, I think I made a mistake. Properties, frame. Oh, I came to fail. So fail should be none, but the border should be blue. And hit apply. That's why I like hitting apply before going to OK. So same box fill is white. You can leave it as white. And color is red and then thickness is three. And hit apply to see then okay. And then you can come in again. Go to properties after you right click. Go to box is already selected. Select black, which is already black, and then thickness is three hit apply and that is it so that was it for our exercise in this section we will deal with statistical plot in this lecture we will start with box and bar chart so i have attached this file to the resources in this lecture which is statistical so please be sure to import this into origin so you can follow along so when you come to plot and you come to statistical there are so many plots in here and we want to start with box and then bar chart so let's start with box so you select a column let's say we select just five columns and come to plot, come to statistical and go to box chart. So it gives you this nice tool here. And mind you, it doesn't really care what the axis you choose. It just plots every column at one side. So it plots column A, column B in here for you. Yeah, so this is how box plots looks like and it's very basic but you can do so many customization let me just pull up one that i did for myself so i just did this customization for myself so this is the least you should be able to do i know you can do better than i'm doing now if you want to edit the graph you can just start by what we've already done you can double click this and change all the shapes all the layers if you want you can also delete you can also delete so just select and go to delete and you can now just add any text if you want so maybe you want to type this as kill kill call this something else so you can also do that and label your axis if you want so we already know how to customize this graph but the most important part is how to customize these box plots and it's just the same if you double click you can once again all of these they are dependent so you can edit them together or you can also edit them independently and you're good to go so for independent let's say if you select this one now you are editing the first one if you select this one you are editing the next one so you can do that and the editing is quite the same as we've done you can change the border colors you can we can change the style you can change the width you can add fill colors add patterns to them so there are so many things that can be done here and 
it just updates your region for you you can add a gradient fill you know you can also adjust the spacing between them you can let's go to box this is the most important tab where when you come here you can so now you have a box remember you also have a preview so you can choose data and it shows you what it will be like you can also choose data plus overlap so your data is distributed this way you can also show this so whatever that you choose you can see a preview of how it will look like and that is why origin is so unique when it comes to data visualization so whatever your presentation need is or your visualization needs are you can come in here and choose whatever that you want you can also come here and change some of these if if you desire to change it to diamond instead of a box plot and you can also go with this so it's it's quite interesting what origin allows you to do come in and and change you can play with all these these things and you also have the whiskers you can change it from I think it's now outlier so you can change it to let's say standard deviation and it changes so it changes the whisker to mean plus 1.5 sd you can also change let's say to minimum and maximum so it just gives you a minimum and a maximum so all these can be done here you can also add labels if you if you desire you can add labels and move them around as you want and you can also do distributions so let's say for your box plot you want to add a normal distribution it shows you the distribution you can have an exponential distribution if you want to you can also have all these Lorenz Poisson and yeah so whatever that you need origin kind of gives you the ability to to do that and you can also edit them how they look if you want to change that particular color to red yeah there you go that's 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 what it does and you can also edit your whiskers so that is this you can maybe change that color to let's say yellow and you can change the mean line is blue now maybe you want to change your mean line to uh, let's try this then you change your mean line so all these things can be done here you can also connect lines so let's say if you want to connect lines with the mean you just hit apply and it connects all the mean together you can connect to median and you can even connect to percentiles so you can specify what percentile that you want you can also edit your outliers and the auto shape is this diamond but you can change it to whatever that you want yeah you can change it to whatever that you want you can also add colors to them let's say let's just choose this yeah, we're not seeing it unless we come to let's just choose data and now you can see you can see them yeah once you choose data okay so when you choose data to some of these things change around and you can also change this to bin bars and all and all that so let's say data let's let's do this instead um let's do get let's do this one and now you have your box and you can also have your data side 
where you can so the data side is this and then you have your box so that was what we chose we chose box on the right and data on the left and have it here so all these things can be modified here change the percentile you know okay so that is it for box plot and the next will be the bar chart so come to plot and then basic 2d and then no, sorry to statistical and okay let's do interval plot and there you go so this can also be edited you can edit them the same way independently dependently add patterns if you want come back to box so now you're seeing this and this is the cool thing you can just change all of these in here without so you can change it back to box if bar if you want you can change it to data you can change it to whatever that you need can be changed in here as well so that is what i wanted to show that if you come back to plot and you come to statistical you see bar chart you see overlap normal distribution half box half overlap and all these when you come to your plot and you come to bar the type you can find all of them here so you can just start with one of them and choose and you see a preview of how your data will be visualized so and then just edit them from there so if this is what you want it can be changed and there you go and all these things can be edited you can edit the data and all of that so that will be it for box and bar chat see you in the next lecture in this lecture we'll learn how to make histograms so to make histograms let's first come to plot come to statistical and we see many different histograms visualized in here so let's just begin with so sometimes when you put your mouse on the image it gives you a brief it says plot the selected y columns as histogram so you can just select let's say this one and come to plot statistical and hit a histogram and this is just similar to what we've done for columns so the editing is quite the same you can change the border colors make them let's say red change this to let's say dash change this to let's say three let's update them you can change the colors if you want if you desire you can change the patterns let's make this solid and maybe red is too strong let's go for something light oh we had red and red that was why so yeah you can change all these add patterns to them add whatever that you desire to it and it's just the same way of editing you can put some spacing in between them and it just becomes like columns but because this is zero if you need them close that's the usual histogram and you can also do some editing here auto band so you can change the band size the number of bands you can begin with and end with you know you can also add distributions so let's say if you want to add uh a lorenz to it you can have a lorenz distribution you can have a binomial distribution you can have a whatever exponential distribution to it and also add labels so that is it for histogram another tool that is useful is you can maybe plot multiple 
and come to plot come to statistical and choose histogram now you're seeing one two three four columns selected but you can come to object manager and let's say deselect till you have one or maybe you want to do two so you can start your plot with multiple and just use object manager to select or deselect and you can edit them this way as well so i wanted to i wanted to throw out that one out there at this point let's come to statistical and you can also have histogram plus rag so we've already done this in columns so you can add rags to the to it you can also come to plot statistical and do histogram plus probabilities so you can have a you can have an histogram and it will give you a brief statistics so it gives you the size which is 50 it gives you the mean which is 251 and gives you all these and these all can be they can be edited and they can all be edited in here so you can there's a plot details but select this and you can edit all of these here as we've already done and this also gives you a cumulative percentage so it uses the frequency and it ends at 100 so it kind of gives you these steps you have a cumulative percentage not frequency so this gives you a cumulative percentage up to 100 so you can see these steps in this axis let's come back to sheet one and you can close this go to plot and statistical you can also do distribution which we've already shown so you can choose any different distribution that you need this one is normal you can choose whatever that you want to choose for your analysis and let's do the next one which will be statistical so you can also add labels so that's the same you can do stacked so if you choose double and then let's go to plot and let's choose stacked and it stacks on it just like we did for columns and the labels you can select come to the label side and also enable and you can add labels or just go in and plot labels with labels we can also come again to plot to statistical and do population pyramid so you can have this this data set is not the best to represent this but it gives you this kind of idea and yeah you can you can try that so okay let's let's try it this way let's maybe plot just a few and come to plot and statistical and population so yeah it gives you that you have like more population this side than the other side We can also come to plot and statistical and do marginal histograms so all these are very important in in your data visualization so you can edit all of these or customize your graph to look more interesting in using what we've studied in under customizing graphs This is the last lecture of section 8 and we'll talk about volume and other plots. So let's select one column, come to plot, 
come to statistical and we can see a violin plot here and there are also many other plots let's start with violin plot so it gives us this kind of shape and this is our range so when we look at our data it's in the hundreds so if you have more data in that range it gives you more peak so it's kind of it gives you like kind of a distribution so this is a smooth distribution and if we come to distribution it's a kennel smooth but we can change it to let's say normal and it gives us an average we can change it to exponential if you want you can change it to Lorenz or Laplace so you have to know what you're doing you, you just can change and it's just the same you can do a lot of things with it just as we've done you can you can do a lot of things with it as we've done you can change the box type you can add data you can so it gives you a preview of what you get you can let's say do this and you can also add percentiles and all so it's just the same and go ahead and edit them there are others that you can also do so you have violin with box violin with point violin with quartile violin with stick so let's let's show that one so you just have your data point shown this this way and you see a more dense area here and here so your average or was most likely somewhere here something like that yeah so it just depends on what you need and what you can do from it let's see what we can do yeah so there are so many tools that we can go through all of them and we we couldn't go through many of the details but what i want treat you to do is just go to google and just type whatever plot that you want to do if you don't know you can just do statistics plot origin and go to they have so many resources on their website so let's say we want to do Pareto chart so origin gives us what to expect so it gives us this and it tells us our data requirement that select one column or data range as the data and another column or data range as the count so you can come in and know what you want to do and choose it and plot sometimes it also gives you what you can use the plot for or they add notes to it so it's very useful when you come to origin lab and just google you can see this is statistics plot and you can have all the details that you need here for which plot and yeah so you see some nodes they can add some extra links for you so that will be all for statistical plots i'll go ahead and give you a little exercise i just want you to try and reproduce this i've also attached this image as a resource to this lecture and i've also attached statistical excel is the same as the second lecture in this section and you can just go ahead and try and replicate this we're taxed to reproduce something like this or close to this and from the statistical data which i attached so you just come in and select all head to plot head to statistical go to box so we have this and we want to get something like this so 
what I'll do is just quickly edit the layers before we come to the box side. So I'll, I'll just get rid of this and let's start. So let's start with okay, let's start with this side. Start with bottom. So I like three and I just like getting my text in. Some people like it other way around. Let's go to the left and then three in in apply and do same for the other side. Okay, so we call this let's make it bold and we call this crystal. size nanometers and we can come to text and call this one 35 I just like copying and pasting a lot so you can just do control V to paste a lot and okay this one is just a duplicate so I guess it will be best to just do portion. So I think this was 45. This one was 55. This one was 75. And this one was 100. Let's delete this one and arrange this well. And I like to so just hold control and select all of them go to copy and then you can just paste and because it's just a duplicate you can come in and arrange them and call the axis temperature so you can name the axis temperature. Let's quickly go to the box. So in our in our question, it was uh, this can be easily done. So I'll just copy and paste here. So you can also do that in between graphs. You can go to another file, copy, and just come and paste here. So let's change this. I think. The box wasn't edited much. So let's just double click and choose. So what is dependent here is the patterns, but the side changes. So let's let's just choose the first color, which will be let's say this one. Hit apply. So we're just doing it for this one. And then come to pattern and let's choose this so we are done with the first side and hit okay so we did a dependent one but because we want this side to be different now let's come in and choose independent and hit okay and now select this one come back here to let's choose green and let's choose crisscross and let's do it for all of them So if you are doing multiple stuff, you can just make a template and it will be easy. So this is done. The last thing will be this because I mean, you can represent your data this way, but you still, you're not representing the, the side on the legion. So if you look at the plot, you had something like this. So. We have to update that 
or go to graph go to legend and go to update legend and you can go to reconstruct so you can go to reconstruct or even update should work and you just updated it so you can still keep these but to edit we don't need these ones so you can just delete them and we only need one of them hit delete so you have it here and you can rename it so you're just saying that this is for annealing and this is for um, co2 that's the green section so that was the assignment see you in the next lecture in this section we'll learn how to do many 3d plots so if you come to plot and go to 3d there are so many things that you can do visually and for this lecture we'll learn how to do scattered 3d plot so before we begin let's generate some data first let's add some columns so add new columns yes and let's say let's add 10 and let's call this so we have x y z you need three axes to plot in 3d so let's generate some data in the x-axis so you select your right click and then go to fill column with a set of numbers let's choose one to thousand and make them repeat and set repeat times for each to be one and you generate one to thousand let's come to y right click fill columns with a set of numbers and choose one to thousand increment of one just choose random and it will provide random numbers let's do same for z right click fill column with a set of numbers let's make it one to ten thousand but this time also random and there you go so you have x y and z let me also save this project let's save it as 3d and i'll attach my sheet as a resource to this lecture so in case you want to plot what i have that is fine so let's select all columns come to plot and then go to 3d and go to scatter and you have something nice like this so you can you can select it and choose this icon and hold hold your left mouse key button or key and you can rotate it around and you can see that your points have been plotted here if this is too crowded we can also maybe plot a little maybe one to ten maybe this will make it interesting and go to so you have it here plotted in 3d and you can see it here you can also come to object manager and check xy position so you can see this is your xy and you can see where your data points are you can also check the xz and then check xyz so yeah that is that is how interesting this is so this is basic but you don't want to represent your data this way so you can first double click on 
an empty side and it will bring you to the layer properties so if you don't want a white background or you can maybe choose a light background if you want if you want to choose something else it's up to you and change the transparency to whatever that you need it to be so yeah so you can play with these add border stuff and make it nice you can also change your size and play with these um, display speed you can change your axis and then the plane so you can come to the xy plane if you want grid lines if you don't want grid lines you can remove them if you want grid lines you can change the position you can add color to it so let's say you can make it colorful if you want yeah you can also do same for the other axis and you can also change um, the the shape so if if you want a whole cube so it's a cube but you don't have a whole cube so you can change this to a whole cube and then change maybe the thickness to my favorite three and you can even make it dashes if you want also you can change the colors that's the border colors um, yeah you can also change the colors for this as well and change the style and all so this this can be interesting with what you want to do with it you can stack it and also add some lightning so yeah you have this you can add some lightning to it so let's say you want to add a lightning of purple to it so you can play with these and make your your graph very spectacular so that is it with a layer but you can also select your point and edit your plot so let's start with line you can if you want to connect with two lines you can select that and it will connect lines together make it like a web and once you connect lines you can edit them as well you can also change the symbols let's deselect this you can change the symbol if you this is a 3d symbol you can make it 2d and you have it this way and you can edit them from that side i like the 3d you can change the shape to whatever that you want to a star to whatever that origin can provide for you and change the colors as well and change the transparency you can also add drop lines so you can choose x axis y axis z axis and select drop lines so it adds drop lines to that so there are so many depending on what you need you can also add error bars in the x in the y in the z as well i'll show that in a minute if you want three um, vector plots and also if you want to label as we've shown before you can do that so for the error bars because let's say if you set this as you see only x error y error so you won't see z error but what you can do is you can set let's try this let's just duplicate it here and go to let's do just control v 
and let's make this an X so set as X and let's set this as Y and let's set this as Y again okay Y already selected and let's set this as Z and let's set this as Z so let's say we want to plot So I've selected two Z's and come to plot, come to 3D and select scatter plus arrow. So you see arrow in the Z direction. And you can do same for the others. That is how you get um, a scattered 3D plot and you can make many things out of it. You can customize it to however you need it for your presentation so thank you and see you in the next lecture so in this lecture we'll continue with our 3d plot let's come back and so this is our data 3d okay let's let's make a new sheet with this again so I should have done that in the first place. So insert and let's paste. So X, Y, and then Z. So this is the file that I attached in the previous lecture. Now let's plot a little bit of it to, so plot 3D and then go to line. So you have your line in 3D connected and you can do same and see where they are you can for maybe more graphic effect you have just two points so it's, it, this is just gonna form a line and you have it in 3d So you can edit this as we've done for scattered. So you can also add a background and all these. You can also select the line itself and edit the plot. So you have a line, you can change the thickness, colors. So this is a 3D line. You can make it bigger with the symbols where the points are. You can also add drop lines to it and add arrows and all. So let's come back and okay, we can also do trajectories. So let's see, let's just select 10 and come to plot and 3D. Let's choose 3D trajectory. So you have it here. So it's the same. You just project into the x-axis you can select the plot this is layer we want the plot itself so if you come to line you have lines connecting you can remove it and you can see it this way as well and you can go ahead and edit them change the shapes as we can you know you know so yeah In this lecture, we will look at 3D color map. So if you come to plot in 3D, you can see 3D color map. So let's select X, Y, and Z from the 3D data and go to plot 3D, 3D color map. And you see something like this. This looks like AFM values. Let's select it. Sometimes selecting the plot. Yes, so I got it here. So you can rotate it around. 
and it looks like the microstructure of a material that's how it looks like that's how i see it how rough it is in a z direction and you have a color map so the color map shows you let me rotate it wisely okay so the color map shows you remember we chose z from we chose random numbers from 0 to 10,000 so you have 0 to 10,000 and it has set colors to it and that is a very nice way of yeah that's a nice way of displaying your data so you can move it around and see how it looks like but this is also a basic visualization and we have to edit this so let's select our plot details and we can start with surface if you want to do flat it just moves everything to your x-axis and it gives you this kind of color map but that's not what we want and you can start with fail fail has been enabled already so you can play around with this you can maybe fail back as gray so it fills the back as gray you can change some of these maybe you just wanted to focus at the top so if you feel back as gray then you can just talk about the top side and you can also come to the color map section and play with these so yeah this is just for the color map section and you can play along with these The most important part is the mesh so we've enabled we can change the width to my favorite three or if there is too thick maybe one it's fine so editing the mesh is kind of the most important and you can use the color map to edit and see it flows rather than selecting gray and it connects the lines so I'll, i prefer using the color map and yeah you can also use that and you also have error bars the, if you put error bars in we didn't put a z axis but if you put error bars in you can change that you can also smoothen if you want to smoothen so usually AFM because it's smoothed you see something like this but you can if you if, if you don't want to smooth uh, you can also do that so it's it's interesting what you can do using origin you don't have to smooth if you don't want to and you can also edit the layer as we've done previously and change this to maybe a cube change the thickness to three hit apply and you can edit each side as you want let's see if we can select a cool background let's try this and there's so many features that you can do so basically that is what i want to show and this is what most people use in terms of 3d you can show the color map nicely so you see the least to the bottom to the uh, to the top and you can explore more yeah you can come in and explore more on how to make this very attractive so yeah you are missing values let's choose greater than yeah this is just for this side if you are missing values you can change them you can change this side as well as we've shown 
so it's it's something interesting to do so you can just connect the back side choose a color on how you want to connect them or in the front side you can also use color map so when you use a color map it's for all of it but if you also want to use different colors it's up to you so yeah you can make nice things with this and show how your data would be in the next lecture we'll look at waterfalls which is also one of the most used In this lecture, we will look into 3D plot and we'll look into waterfall. Before we can do that, I have used XRD file. If you don't have it, I will attach it to the resources in this lecture. But this is a file that we already have. So let's select A to D and go to plot and go to 3D and go to waterfall. So this is a nice way that many people plot and maybe compare data points or different signals. So you can see maybe if you check this peak, it's lowered in here and it's not even visible in here. If you check this peak, it's kind of high. If it's the same sample, it's a little lower here and it's this way. So it's a nice way of also representing many data points remember that we also did stack and we also can combine line we can also do multiple y-axis so many people do it this way and origin gives us the ability to do it as well you can edit all of these as we were as we've always done you can choose maybe 10 and and at 50 or maybe 40 and hit apply and you can do all these changes that we always do editing the axis the thickness and the major thicks and the minor thicks and you can also double click on on your plot come to plot properties you can edit as a dependent if you're editing everything the same or independent if you want to do it individually you can come to line you can choose the thickness of the line you can add fill okay let's change the color let's make it blue you can add fill area let's choose inclusive add apply and we've added it so it's a nice way of also representing your data. You can add drop lines to horizontal or vertical. Yeah, let's try vertical. Vertical is not showing, check horizontal instead. And because horizontal is this way and you wouldn't see it, but vertical is this way. You can go to patterns and and play around this as well change the fill color from black to maybe this and add patterns to them and there you go you can also edit your layer properties add background colors there's none but you can make it this way and you can choose all those and and edit all these planes so choose all the planes and maybe make it this it's, it's up to you so it's it's interesting what we can do here and customize our graph and maybe let's choose this So you have a nice graph. Maybe this is not the best way to represent, but you have your axis, you have this axis, and you have your Z, and everything can be edited. So you can really customize it for your presentations. Also, 
if you come to plot you can go to 3d and go to waterfall you see this one is y color mapping so let's choose it what this does is it chooses the y axis and uses colors to map from least to highest so you can choose the color map from here and you can see it it's at black but and it ends at gray that is the space above it but blue i see is the highest in our plot and red is probably the lowest so it just maps it let's zoom in a little bit to let's say let's say 17 should work 17 and hit okay so yeah and let's change this thickness to two three apply so yeah we see it more we see the effect more so you can see when you're comparing let's say this peak you can draw you know we studied how to add lines you can add a line through this section and you see that this peak is high so for your presentations you can use some of these approaches and be able to explain more and that's same you can also use color map for the other axis z it means this color will be different from this color from this color so all of these things can be done using origin let's see what we have plot 3d and yet you can change the color mapping of all those so in the last lecture we'll look at 3d bars and stack 3d so see you in the next lecture in this lecture we'll use a 3d file if you don't have it i have still attached it as a resource to this lecture so you can download it import it and follow along let's select x y and z head over to plot and move to 3d and select 3d bars so this looks too crowded let's scale down a little bit let's go in for let's say 1 to 20 and go to plot and then okay so we have something like this and we can rotate it around so this is a nice way of representing your your bars if you have x y and z you can also represent it this way and you can edit it as we've shown you can start with the layer properties you can change the background styles you can also change the size and the plane is what I usually work with so you can maybe do say front corner or you can do a whole cube and let's change this color to let's choose blue and the thickness let's choose five which is very thick and we can also play with a lightning and you can choose some bright light or, or maybe darker is fine let's try dark colors yeah let's choose some dark colors okay so you can have something like that and let's move it around okay let's do it this way this plot shows x y and z so that's what does the coordinates that we have you can select the plot properties by double clicking on one of the bars first one is you can change the border 
so we can change this to let's say blue and change it to let's say two or maybe we are doing too much blue let's try black and there you go and you can also change the shapes to let's say cylinder to full pyramid you can do other shapes as well this is a mixture so you can you can do many things with this and you can also change some of these are the gradient and you can also come to this side and you can keep the shape or if you want to change it so if you keep it you have this you can slide let's say the x direction to be more broader and maybe narrow the y direction or you can just keep the shape you can also do some color map so to do the color map you select this which means you have from you have from 1080 which is this to 9080 which is this but you can head over to color map and you can change the levels you can also change the fill so this is the rainbow has been selected but you can go to color list and choose your own colors so i like kill 13 i use it a lot and you can apply and it changes if you have error bars you can also add them we didn't add error bars and you can also add labels and basically you can edit your your axis as we always do so you can edit them and make them more visible you can remove the grid lines if you don't want them so there are so many things that you can do with this and make it more representative of what you want to achieve so yeah let's check the next one which says plot and that is 3d stacked so it's the same so for 3d stacked you have to let's add some columns so column add let's add 10 columns and let's just copy this and and then paste it so it's the same you just have to have an x a y and a z and you come in head over to plot and go to stack oh i always forget it's too huge let's just do about 10 of them and then plot and 3d and you stack it on it so it's just the same way as we did the usual bars you can also come in plot 3d and you can do 100 percent stacked so it kind of fails and use percentage to because it's 50 50 i just duplicated you see that it's the bar is at 50 but if it's different you can edit that and 3d so you can use some of all these tools to help you it's quite interesting what you can do with that we have 3d walls um, 3d stacked walls so we already did that um, we already did waterfalls but these are walls let's let's see what that can do and head over to plot 
and there you go so sometimes if you have a huge data set you don't appreciate much so let's come to 20 and then plot and 3d wall so it's just your 2d graph but it's printing in 2d in 3d for you so it's kind of this is your graph but it's going to print it's going to add a constant x um constant z for you yeah constant z so you have your x and y which is this and it adds a constant z for you so you can come in and play around can do stacked walls and all these in here so that'll be it for section 9 which is 3d plot in this section we will study functional plot so let's begin by selecting blank workbook and head over to plot go to function plot and and then choose new 2d plot so this is going to help us write our function and from the function make a plot so you have your function written over here and then you have your x value so you have y of x and your x values are from one point is from one point to another and you have number of points also you can come to this side and insert some inbuilt functions or equations so let's say we want to try an exponent so let's just try and make 100 point of an exponent from 2 to 20 and yeah and build this so there you go so you've built an exponential graph and you can edit it as we've always done so you can do same edit the scale the lines and ticks and all you can also double click on this and it will first bring the function so you can even change your function again or edit your function as you go so let's say we want to add two times to it and hit apply and it changes you can also add let's say three here but you always have to add time so anytime you have this color it means it's not complete so make sure you complete what you have so you have to add a multiplication sign and you have it here so these are some of the things that you can do using this tool you can also click this side and bring back the formula and maybe you want to change it to a square root or something or add some more signs or maybe write some more you can do it here you can also come to line and edit it as we always do so we have solid you can change the styles you can change the width change the colors change the transparency you can edit all these add drop lines and labels as we always do for the line editing so let's come back and this time go to new 2d parametric so this is quite the same you just have to write so this time it's a function of t so you have two equations as a function of t and you can write your equations so let's let's just write one a times let's try a times cos t then let's do plus 
let's do b divided by n and let's do times cos and let's do n times t so we have this equation let's just copy it and bring it to the y side and change the causes to sines or the cosines to sine and let's make this a negative and make this a sign however you can see that our equations are not complete because we have these shaded areas so we have to come and define these constants so if you come here the name you double click then you say a then come to value you double click let's call it two and then you can right click and add new and then let's go to b and go to value let's make it one and then you right click add new let's go to c um n and make it two so let's just copy this in case it doesn't come out right we don't lose it and we go okay so there you go you have a parametric plot and you have your table also generated from the functions that you provided you can double click on it and adjust so once you adjust it maybe you make this seven and you hit apply things change but i think the scale has changed so that is something to note and yeah that will be it for parametric so this brings us to the end of 2d function plot let's move to 3d function plot see you in the next lecture in this lecture we'll continue with our function plot but this time we're gonna do 3d so let's select 3d so in 3d we have the function side and then we have where we have to also key in the function so we can choose our grid the mesh grid which is the number of columns and the number of rows in our mesh and we can also choose our scale in the x-axis and in a y-axis so let's try something let's just try 0 to 20 let's try 0 to 20 and let's try three times x to the power 3 plus okay let's let's copy this and make it plus control v plus control v plus control v so we have this plus let's make this 4 and let's make this y and let's make this minus let's make this minus x squared and also try making this maybe 6 y squared let's just try this okay so we have this let's copy it in case we lose it and okay let's try it so there you go and it builds the function for you as well it, bu it builds your your sheet for you as well so this is it.
so this will be kind of like the solution if if you plot this you are going to get this okay so you can let's zoom in and rotate it around so it looks so cool and you can edit this as we do so let's double click it brings you back to the function and you can edit it in here if you want let's let's see if we change the mesh to 500 we make it more finer i guess and we can also change the scale or change the equation let's just make one four and hit apply and it, it changes it so whatever equation that you have to plot you can always use this to plot and you can come back and edit it so you can edit this as we always do so you can edit all of these just try them which ever one that you like can be changed you can add a color map to it as well and there you go let's see if there's a color map associated so let's go to color map okay i can find that okay and you can also change the mesh okay i think it would rather be here and so you can use color map then so now you have the color map associated with it and you can change the width of the mesh and all so it's something cool if you have all these uh you can play around with them if you want side walls or not yeah yeah so you can play around this and also change as we've already shown you can you can change this to maybe a cube and make this three apply you can change the colors around and and use it to demonstrate what maybe you modeled an equation or something you can easily use this to plot and it's also interactive so you can come back in and so you can come back and edit your your graph as well yeah so yeah that'll be it for function plot before i forget there was one thing so if you come to plot and you come to function you can go to let's say 2d the first one is theme so let's just try this you can go to a function let's choose exponent so you have an exponent and you can come to theme and copy it and close this and come to file come to new come to function plot and there you go you can choose 2d once you're here you can come back to theme and do paste and it brings back this you can however also save your theme so you can always save your theme here you can go to save us and save it so that maybe if you're using you have an equation you can build your library yourself but there are tons of things to do using this function too and the last thing will be label so when you're building your equation you can add labels remember you have long names so you can put 
your words you can put units in your equation you can put comment which will become legend in your in your plot as well this brings us to the end of section 10 and also to the end of data visualization i'm so glad that you followed with me we have studied so many great things on how to visualize our data and i believe it will be helpful for every presentation that you have we didn't do some of these plots because they are too specialized you can always ask questions about them or any of the things that we've done in the q a section and if i'm getting many interest from some of these plots that i didn't do i will then update the lessons and it's a lifetime lesson so you always have access to it so that being said thank you for following me through the data visualization and i'm very grateful that you followed me the next few sections will move into a little bit of data analysis we will look into some of these and then also the statistics so we'll go through some of these so stay tuned so this section begins our data analysis and we will start with statistics so let's begin with a blank workbook and zoom in and we are going to deal with statistics so let's generate some more columns and add some data so select a right click and then let's fill column with a set of data let's do 300,000 to 500,000 and make a random and choose total number of whole set as thousand so we are going to call this selling price and this is going to be like you're selling homes and let's also add let's say region and then Okay, region and then bedroom numbers so bedroom let's just make it bedroom and for this side let's make it region 1 to region 4 let's make it random and also thousand numbers but bedrooms let's make it region so fill column with let's make it 1 to 3 and also thousand so yeah you can generate your own but i also attached this so let's go ahead and save it file save and let's save this as status okay starts starts yeah okay so i'll attach the excel to as a resource to this lecture so to begin with statistics let's come in to statistics there are so many things but i love the stats advisor so you can you can come in to start advisor and maybe you don't know what to do with your data <laughs> you can come in and let's say come to summarize so it says what do you want to do so you just have to choose one of these so let's say we want to summarize describe or present data with basic stats and then it asks you your options so one is what statistics results do you want or show do you want basic statistics results example mean standard deviation and so on or you want some of these so let's say we are going with this then it gives you suggested features so do you want statistics on column do you want stats on row do you want stats on pivot table 
so we can do start let's say on column and then open the dialog so it brings the start on column so what this is doing is just bringing the the start on column dialog box and you can come in and manipulate so you have your input so you have independent columns or you can also combine all the columns into one data sheet and you can select your column so let's select a and come to quantities you can choose what stats you want on your column if you want mode you want so it has so much built-in tools for you you can come in and check whatever that you want you can also you have more to do you can customize your percentiles and all in here so it depends with what you want to do and you can also control your weight so this is a direct weight you can do more depending on what what you want but this demonstration is just for simple one you can have graphs also attached and yeah and just hit ok and it gives you and it gives you the stats on the first column you have total number you have mean standard deviation the sum so whatever you selected comes in so the first step is your sheet make sure you don't close it otherwise you lose your stats but it brings another worksheet to your workbook which will be the summary so the stats on column generated and it also gives you some more data in here that is a nice tool to have which is the stats on column you can come in and play with this if you want to do a fit if you want to so this is a nice tool that you can maybe you don't know what to do with your data you can just come in and play along with it and see how useful that will be so that will be it for start advisor see you in the next lecture In this lecture, we are going to learn how to do statistics on columns and rows. So the first way is just to select a column, come to column, come to set column value, and you can come to function. Okay, so when you come to function, there are tons of statistics that you can do over here so do you have inbuilt functions for you so because the output will be in column a let's just select e and come to function and then let's go to statistics and let's just choose mean and you have this pop-up always don't ignore it says it says mean of column a returns the average value of column a so let's say we type in column A and hit apply and we have the mean of column A. So in other words, we can also just come here and type mean of column A and that will be correct. The next approach is to come to statistics descriptive statistics and you can come to columns and it will bring this pop-up that we had when we want to start advisor so from this column you can choose the column that you want some statistics on so let's say we want column a and you can come to quantities choose whatever that you want as we did before It generates this for you you can also click on this which is and come to change parameters and maybe you want to change whatever that you chose so let's go for B instead and it generates this so you can always use this icon which is shows over here and come to change parameters and 
come to select columns so let's say we want to select all three a b c and go to ok and you have statistics on column a on b and on c and you can also do same for row so when you're done make sure you don't close this window this is the report window on statistics on columns if you want to close it you can just right click and delete these if you close the whole workbook you lose your data you can also come in and do statistics on so descriptive statistics and statistics on rows choose the dialog but before you do that i will entreat you to select the rows so let's say you want to do start on these rows and come to statistics descriptive statistics and statistics on rows go to open and the rows have been selected so let's say you just hit ok and you have it in here so you have the rows labeled here and you can have the stats the other way is also to come to the standard toolbar and locate the command window and and just type start so it shows you can hit start and you can go into let's say column b and hit enter and you have the start on column b showing so you can whatever that it's whatever that is checked in there when you come to the dialog box here will show over here so whatever that is checked here will show in here so make sure you can also use this tool if you want some quick values on on your on your columns or rows so that will be it for this lecture see you in the next one In this lecture of statistics, we will learn how to do cross tabulations and also use chi-square. So cross tabulations are very important. If you have variables and you want to have them in cross tabulations, we'll see a demonstration. It's very useful for your data analysis and also even visualization. So before we start, we'll go ahead and change this let's delete this section and go to fill column width let's choose instead of one so from 300,000 to 500,000 and then let's choose 50,000 and hit OK so now what we have here is homes so for homes with 350,000 or uh, for homes with different prices you have different regions we've chosen regions 1 to 4 and you can rename this to maybe countries or for states or whichever and you have different number of bedrooms for different prices but if you have this data and you want to explain to someone you have rows of about thousand it's so difficult but using cross tabulations it becomes easy and you can also use chi-square and others to determine the relation between variables that you choose so let's let's do a quick demonstration just head over to statistics go to descriptive statistics and head over to cross tabulation so this is your cross tabulation pop-up what you want to do is choose a row so you will understand but let's choose this as our row let's choose c okay let's choose b instead so b as our region and let's choose layers you are you see this in a bit so hold on and in in the statistics column let's choose so you can choose what you want to 
do if you just want count so you wanted to count let's say all all the numbers um it will do that for you let's just choose count and maybe we'll add some more later and the test so we are done with the cross tabulation side now this is the test if you have a chi-square test you can you can choose the measure of association so make sure you understand or you research into these associations let's just go with contingency and at this point you have your cross tab report and you also have your plot data so if you want them in a new workbook you can choose let's just keep it in a new worksheet and also choose a mosaic plot this is your cross tab it looks simple so in the cross tab let's come back to our worksheet remember we have a a selling price of the home b is the region and c is the bedroom now in the cross tab we have region we have bedroom so if you want a two bedroom for and now here you have a and b so for a you have your price and b you have which region they are so let's say if you want a two bedroom house for three hundred thousand in region one you find 14 of them in your data set you find 12 of, you have find 13 for region two if you come to region one let's say this is california for this this is bedroom so for a one bedroom house in region one which is california maybe you find 14 for new york you find 15 for london you find 12 and for maybe south africa you find 13. so that is how you do your cross tabulations and it also gives you a total cross tabulation so you can have sorry this is it you can have a total here of all 300,000 homes in region 1 is 45 and the total count is 1000 for some reason you want to change the parameters you just select this and come to change parameters come back to input and let's change this to C and remove this the layers let's rather make it B and hit OK so what this is saying is you have region 1 so in region 1 so this is region 1 if you want a $300,000 home with one bedroom you find 14 of them with two bedrooms you find 14 of them with three bedrooms you find 17 of them if you go to region 2 which let's say is California for a $300,000 home one bedroom you find 16 for $500,000 home one bedroom you find 25 so this is how you can also represent and do statistics on your data and you can also have the total you can come in and add change parameters you can add some of these statistics to it yeah uh, i just did count but you can add some of these statistics to it and let's head over to the mosaic side and let's just double click so this is also a representation of the total so you're saying that this is the price of the home and then this is the number of bedrooms to explain the mosaic plot you have to know that this is the total regions and these are the bedrooms so let's let's just so that we don't confuse ourselves let's you can rename this as bed rooms and then these are the these are the total regions okay so you have region one so you can even add some more text to it so let's add some text and let's call this region one 
let's add text and two and then and then three and then four so you can edit this to be so nice and then and then five so what this is saying is that if you come to region one for all three hundred thousand dollar homes with one bedroom you have this for two bedrooms you have this for all five hundred thousand dollar homes in region five you find this so that's a nice way and you can edit this as we've shown previously just double click and you can edit them dependently or independently and make it very nice for your presentation so that is that is what cross tabulation can do let's just click this to go back and you can choose let's say region one and just demonstrate what it is in there yeah and you can also come and do the chi square test make sure you understand this and also the measure of association that we chose so you see the results that if you have region one the pearson chi square says at the 0 0.05 level there is not significant evidence of association between two variables so if you check we are not we have strong association so it means when you come to region one you most likely find a strong association between finding a three hundred thousand dollar home or a five hundred thousand dollar home and a bedroom so you have strong association here and you can also use the measures so we chose the measure we chose contingency coefficient so it gives you what it does here whatever that you choose it gives you some kind of brief you can also research that online so you can see that region one is kind of greater than region two and then region three is less and then region four is less so you're finding less association between finding a home of any price and then the number of bedrooms yeah that reflects in here as well okay so that would be it for cross tabulation and for chi square so make sure you come in and manipulate some of these in a previous lecture we learned how to do cross tabulation but maybe you don't need cross tabulation maybe you just want to glean some information from specific columns or from specific selected data sets what you can do is come to statistics and descriptive statistics you can do discrete frequency or even frequency count so let's start with discrete frequency and open a dialog so you can come in and choose a you can however choose any column that you want you can also choose all columns or select specific columns just double click and select and the quantities to compute origin gives us the ability to compute count relative frequency cumulative frequency and all and you can also choose case sensitivity if you have text in there and you want to do discrete frequency and uh, you want to sort by decreasing count you can also sort by ascending count and these orders and if you want your new result to be in this worksheet that is what is selected but you can choose a new workbook as well and hit ok so this is saying that for three hundred thousand dollar homes you have 218 count for four hundred and fifty thousand dollar homes you have 250 count so this is a nice way of also sorting your data the next one is statistics descriptive statistics and you can come into 
frequency count and hit dialog so over here what we did was discrete which is the exact number but for frequency count it's like a range so you can also choose a and you can specify bin and range by so you can do center you can do bar bin end and all you can also do computation control so minimum bin and beginning you can this is auto but you can choose it yourself and also where ends you can choose the bin size so remember this is from 300,000 so it means you're starting from 280,000 and it moves to 300,000 to 320,000 because it's moving by 2,000 you can change all these here number of bins can be changed over here and you can come into quantities to compute you can do count you can so this will be your output kind of what will show and let's just hit ok so this is saying that if you have the bin center which is 290 and then i think we chose bin center let's change parameter and see something um let's yeah we chose bin center let's choose bin begin and hit okay okay so we are saying that the bin begins at 280,000 and ends at 300,000 the frequency is zero and the cumulative frequency as well is zero so between 300,000 you have 170 218 here so if you compare with a discrete you see you have some relation but you have some more divisions in here and you can customize this as well so that that's also a nice tool to have and you can do all these using origin in this lecture we'll learn how to do distribution fit and normality test so if you come to statistics and Come to descriptive statistics you see distribution fit and normality test so let's start with distribution fit so just open open dialog and let's select x which is a which is a selling price you can select any of them but for demonstration let's start with this and then for your distribution fit so this is how they are distributed and you want to fit it okay so you can choose the quantities that you want in your summary you can choose some of these choose mode and then the basic test you can do a mean test or you can do or you cannot you can also choose no so for a mean test if you want to do a t test which is used to determine if there's a significant difference between the mean of two groups you can go ahead and choose it or a z test which also compares to variance okay so you can also choose your distribution if you want discrete or continuous you can choose the distributions in here and come over to plot do you want a cumulative distribution frequency plot or probability plot or just bar chart and histogram you can also choose the goodness of the fit so make sure you know what these fits models are and know what you're gonna get from it come to output so you start with input you choose these which will give you a summary and then where will it output to you can choose new worksheet or a new workbook and just hit ok so this is it this is our input a it gives us summary of the descriptive statistics which is and the number of samples the missing number of po um, data points were zero so everything was failed this was the mean and we have our skewness ketosis the mode we have our quartiles we, we can have all these also modified and then you have your fit so this is your distribution fit 
so it's a normal fit and you can come back and you can also have a box plot which can be edited as we have already done you can come back and change some of the parameters so if you come in here and you can maybe add some more columns so let's go to select columns and we already have a so let's select b and c and go to ok now you have your data range from a b and c and let's go to quantities let's yeah we already have this it's fine let's do a mean test so let's do a t test and and the, for the distribution we can even do discrete and choose poisson and the goodness of the fit let's choose this for demonstration and then there we go so this is our input we have a b c so our output is going to give us result for a result for b result for c and then we can have all these values here and for a b and c and this is our mean test so this is yeah you can infer from it that at the 0 0.05 level the population mean is significantly different from that of the test mean so yeah and you can have your your discrete fit as we did so if you select this one this is our discrete fit using poisson and you can change it any way that you want so let's come back to our sheet and go to statistics and move to descriptive statistics move ahead to normality test and open dialog box so normality test helps us to determine whether sample data has been drawn from a normally distributed population so this is a test that will help us to know if this is normally distributed so let's just choose a and hit quantities you can choose these tests so these are models that you have to know them before you choose but for demonstration let's choose the first one and you can also add graphs and all and plots if you want at the 0 0.05 level the data was not significantly drawn from a normally distributed population so that is your result so basically you can do all these tests with your data and all these analysis with your data and that will be it for this lecture so correlation or getting the correlation coefficient is very useful in numerical analysis because it gives us a measure of the strength of the relationship between two random variables and if for instance you have you have let's say this variable and this variable it gives us a correlation or a measure between the association and this variable so let's do a demonstration let's head over to statistics descriptive statistics and head over to correlation coefficient and open the dialogue so in a dialogue the first thing is we have to select at least two columns to compare so let's select let's say let's select column b so go to select columns and select b and c so now we have b and c selected now you can choose psns which is used to measure the strength of a linear association between variables and spearman and kendall is for non-parametric so maybe uh let's just start with linear and add plot and hit okay so for correlations usually have minus one so you have a model so pearson you have a model where you solves the equations for you 
and you have the relation the values can either be from plus one to zero to minus one so let's so you have minus one zero and two one so if you have zero or close to zero it means it's not associated so the two variables are highly unassociated in a linear way because we're using pearson once you move to plus one it means it's associated highly associated and you kind of have a slope a positive slope and if you have negative one it means it's negatively associated so what we have is association between b and b so b and b because it's the same value so when you come over here b and b by itself because the values are the same is going to be highly associated so you have a positive one value and but when you come to b and c it's almost unassociated so you have so these two are almost unassociated yeah and you can come over to this so let's come over here and you come to c so c is the same it's just the repeat on the other side because if you have c and c is associated but c and b are c and b are also highly unassociated so let's just go ahead and try let's go to open and let's try our xrd file Oh, save yes let's let's just see what happens let's compare some of these go to statistics and head over to descriptive and correlation let's yeah okay let's choose columns so c is selected let's select b as well so we have we have c and b or b and c whichever let's choose because we know that the XRD pattern is not going to be linear, let's just go with spear, Spearman and add a scatter plot and hit OK. So now we have a correlation and the Spearman correlation is telling us that if we take these two columns or these two variables, if you take just c by itself so this one and compare it with itself is highly associated so you have you have one okay you have one now if you have highly and also the other way around for b and b you have one now if you have if you compare c and b you have a positive slope so if you check the diagram you can see it you have a positive slope so it's it's also strongly associated to some point okay and the same thing for the other way around so that was something cool that i wanted to show as well let's go back to open and head back to start I'll save this one so if we check our diagram for this one that we did before Lot. okay so you see it's it's randomly you don't have a linear so although we did pearson you don't have a linear association that is why we are getting close to zero so this is also a measure to see how two variables are associated with themselves you can maybe you have ten thousand data sets and you want to have an idea or even compare the strength of association between two different variables you can head over to correlations and do that. We have covered so many great things under statistics and I believe you can do almost all statistics that you need. However, there are other tools under statistics that we wouldn't cover in this class. So there is hypothesis testing, ANOVA, non-parametric tests survival these are highly specialized and many people wouldn't need this so for instance hypothesis test let's just try a one sample t test go to open dialog and let's choose column a and go to t test for mean 
so when you make a prediction to the mean or you test the mean or you put a hypothesis in this test usually helps you to predict whether you are close to it or you are not and it gives you like a probability you can add a level of confidence so let's predict that our our mean is 300 and because we chose so this side you have 300,000 to 500,000 so let's just choose 400,000 as our mean and we can add alternate hypothesis let's say let's propose that our mean is going to be greater than 400,000 you can add level of confidence if you want let's just add let's say we are not sure we are just 50% sure and hit okay so from our test it shows that it says at the 0 0.05 level the population mean is not significantly greater than the test mean however we are having 0 0.7 it means that our, our hypothesis is close to the mean so we chose 400,000 and the mean is 398,800. So we are very close to it. So that is, these are all tools from statistics that maybe someone from statistics background or class will need. And they are highly specialized. You can also do ANOVA, which is analysis of variance. You can do non-parametric tests and all these. So there are so many specialized tools that can come in you can go to the origin lab website and there are tons of resources to help you with this however if you still want me to update the class please let me know in the q a section and if i'm getting more interest i will update this section of the class so thank you and see you in the next section in this section of data analysis we will look at some mathematics of data so when you come to your workbook let's choose one x many y and you have this so when you come to analysis the first one is mathematics and we want to begin with interpolate and extrapolate so let's generate some data let's go ahead and choose so let's go to plot and from plot let's go to function plot and new 2d so let's do y is equal to sine of x and choose maybe six pi and let's choose maybe 50 data point let's see how it looks like okay so this is this looks good and let's double click and go to workbook and we have the data set so let's say you have this data set and you want to interpolate there are many ways of doing them the first way let's just you can plot your data and go to gadget and you see interpolate so you choose interpolate and it brings up the interpolate tab so there are methods of interpolation origin gives you four so you can do linear cubic spleen so let's say we want to do a cubic spleen and just hit ok and it, it chooses an area for you but you can come over here and move to expand to full plot range so you can come in and and play around this but if you're satisfied with this you can just go ahead and hit output so it gives you the output so this is it you have your interpolation if you compare these two data points they are very different okay so that is one way of doing that let's close this 
and let's close this so that is one way of doing that from your plot the common way is to interpolate from your data sheet so you can you can even forget it just come to analysis mathematics and you see interpolate or extrapolate and hit open dialog so i love this one because you can put it on auto preview and see what you're getting so let's choose our input let's choose this data set that we have and because everything that you change you see a preview i love this one and you can choose maybe cubic spleen you can choose the number of points for your interpolation let's choose let's say 50 so you're choosing less points or you can choose maybe 10 which is extremely low and you can see that is kind of changing you can choose the bigger you go the more finer so you can even use this to kind of smoothen your plot so let's choose 100 and and you see the effect let's change the method to let's say so there are many different methods there there are lean there is linear there is others that you can also choose from these four and you can choose the minimum the max and also show where the output would go so you can click here you can choose that the output should go to the, the worksheets that we're using the new worksheet or a new workbook let's just choose a new workbook hit ok and this is what we have so yeah this is what we have so that is how you do basic interpolation you can however also come in to analysis and there are other interpolation types like interpolate interpolate or extrapolate y from x so in this one you can let's add let's choose this one and go to columns and add some columns so let's add 10 okay so for this one let's go ahead and copy let's say this side so let's just copy this and then paste and C and head over to this one so we want to rename this as X okay yes so we have this X and we have this so we want to use this to help us get new interpolation for our new x so we'll get new y's from this using this x and if it's something that you need it can be done also using origin so you can come here to analysis analysis and then mathematics and interpolate the first one there you go so here it says interpolate or extrapolate x y data at a given set of x value so let's choose our x values to interpolate and let's choose c which is this one and then our input will be a and b which we've chosen a and b and if you would want to do let's say cube explain you can add extra extrapolate if you want to let's choose a new or maybe it should go to what we have let's choose d so the output goes to d and hit okay so you have your new you have your new y and you can select all of them and head to plot and basic 2d and then plot 
so it's kind of it kind of end somewhere here let's make this a symbol so that we can appreciate and change the size to maybe 12 okay so yeah so for this it means you used the normal sign function that we had and you just had new x values and you used this to interpolate and have y values for your new x so that is something that can also be done using origin if you need this for anything it can be done you can also come to mathematics and choose so let's go to the work okay let's come here and go to analysis and mathematics and there are other ones that you can do you can also interpolate x you can interpolate z from x and y you can do trace interpolation which is kind of like it keeps the sequence so instead of instead of interpolating this way it can actually interpolate this way so it keeps this is good if you have kind of like a sequential data point yeah so that is all for interpolate always know that you can come in here to mathematics and do some interpolation In this lecture, we'll learn how to do some basic math on rows and columns. So let's get back to our sign function. A quick notice, I've saved it as math. I've attached the Excel to the previous lecture and also attached as a resource to this lecture so you can get it. So if you also come to analysis and then mathematics, you can do some basic math like just for instance let's choose simple column math and then choose a column so let's choose this column and maybe column a and you can do let's say let's add a number you can add a reference data so let's say we'll do another one maybe we'll add column b to column a but let's just start with constant and choose 10 and let's choose our output to be e so let's choose our output to go to e and hit okay so there you go you have you, we added 10 so it says add 10 on a so you just added 10 to column a and you can come back change parameters instead of a constant we can do reference data and you can choose a reference data so if you want to add let's say two columns you can choose b and choose your output and you've added these two together so that is something cool to also note you can come in and change so they have some built-in functions and you can also customize if you want and write in your formula over here so that is something interesting to note you can also do same for rows and if for some reason let's say let me come back and let's choose this so if you go to columns so on the columns if this one is selected as B but if you want to select just a portion of your column maybe a range you can select maybe the entire column is 1 to 50 but you can select maybe 1 to 10 and it will keep that range and hit OK and let's hit OK and it changes for you so that is something to note you can also come back to analysis and move to mathematics and you can also do 
for instance you can normalize a column so let's come to open dialog and let's choose let's choose a okay to make it easy let's just come in and type one two and then three okay so we want to normalize this so let's come to analysis and mathematics and come to normalize columns so we are going to choose column g to normalize and choose g okay so in g what you can do is you want to normalize from 0 to 1 so that is it you can also change how you want to normalize it maybe you want to divide by a max you want to normalize it anyway it depends on what you need for your analysis and let's choose the new output to be h and there you go so this is what it does it's, it has normalized from 0 to 1 so it has chosen the highest as 1 and chosen the least as 0 and the intermediate as half so that is also a nice tool to have and to work with your data and you can come in and play with some of these things on simple math as well also note that you can always come to column and come to okay you can always choose a column and then come to set column values and you can also always do your math in here there are inbuilt functions for you as we've shown previously so this was to show that you can do so many things with your columns in this lecture we'll learn how to do differentiation and integration of our data so when you come to origin and you head over to analysis mathematics and you can see differentiation and integration here so let's start with differentiation open the dialog box so from the dialog box you can see that we have calculate derivatives of x and y data so that is what we are trying to do and you need an input so let's select our a and b column so this selects sheet one and then you have a column a and column b selected we can also choose the derivative order let's select one this is just a first derivative we can also add some smoothening if we want and we can show where the output goes let's choose the output to go to to go to d okay and hit okay so this is it so this this is our new derivative solved let's go ahead and plot this and see the result great so we have y of x as our sine function as a black and the first derivative is the red so if you have a sine function and you differentiate you get a cos function so this is a cosine okay that is great so let's continue so to do integration you head over to analysis and then mathematics and come to integrate and head over to open dialog box so from this we should choose where our integral goes let's choose our input first let's choose a and b so a and b which is our sine function has been selected and you can choose the area type either mathematical or absolute let's stick with mathematical and you can choose your output quantities if you want some of these if you want to choose where it begins and ends you can do that 
you can also come in and choose your integral curve data and add some range if you want and your integration result can also be shown here so okay there we go so it gives us this, this is what happened it did this for us and it gives us the area of integration so if we chose plot we would also see area of integration in there so you can see all the information is in here let me zoom in and there you go so you have your full width at half maximum and you have all these information in here so let's see the results by plotting so let's plot our sine function and plot the integral you head over to plot and you can do line so yeah so this is our sine function and this is the integral now if you integrate a sine function the result is a cosine plus a constant so it's a negative of a cosine so this is the negative of a cosine and plus a constant so it pushes it up so that is correct so that is basically how you do integrals you can always also just plot and from your plot so let's say you plot this come to lines and symbols and you see the gadget too so you can always come to differentiate or integrate so let's try differentiate and you can choose the derivative and it chooses this area you can head over and expand to full plot and once you zoom out you can see the effect over here as well so this is our plot and then this is the integral this is the derivative so this is the first derivative you can however come in and also choose show second derivative so this is the second derivative so this is how you can also play with your plots you can always do some derivatives and integrals of your data set also you can do some data manipulation by coming to analysis data manipulation and you can do subtract reference data duplicate reduce duplicate x data reduce by group so all of these are basic things that you can also do using origin and use to duplicate or manipulate your data so that will be all for this section always note that you can do a lot of maths with your data using origin in this lecture we'll learn how to do linear and polynomial fit so to do that you have to come to analysis and head over to fitting so there are so many ways of fitting but in this lecture we'll look at linear and polynomial fit so let's head over to linear fit and open the dialog box so to do linear fit you have to select some columns where you want to fit or to get your plot so you can even start by selecting these columns and come in and the input data will be selected but you can also come in here and choose your column so we've chosen a and b to fit please note that i have attached fitting to the resources so you can always go in and import it into origin and follow as well so once you have it in here you can go to fit control and you can control how your fit will come out to be so you can for instance fix the intercept to a certain value so now if you check this box you can now put in okay you want your intercept to be this value or you want your slope to be this value so you can play around this as well you can also head in and change some of the fit parameters um let's say we don't want this okay and we just want to keep it simple so but you can go through this and change whatever that you need so just to do a simple fit 
you can just come in and and play around this you can show you can ch change how the output will be and let's just go to okay so this is the result so you have your sheet this is where our data set is and the next one is the f the report and you have the parameters so you have your intercept and the slope and you also have some statistics generated from what we selected uh, you can come in and always change that if you want so you can go back here and change parameters and you can change some of the things that we had and this is the fitted curves plot so when you click this is our data that we had and so let's say we made an experiment and we had this data but we want to have a fit or a model for it so in terms of linear you can use this equation which is a plus bx and our a is the intercept so the value is 0 0.8 and our b is the slope which is 0 0.83 whatever so yeah that is that so that is how you do a simple linear fit and the next tab is your data set so you have your fitted curve plot over here let's head over to our sheet again and the next one is to do fitting so you want to do fit linear with x arrow so this time you can also come in and set this as your x arrow and it will be included in your fit so let's come in and head to analysis fitting and we can head over to fit linear with x arrow come in so now we have a b c column selected and let's just accept whatever it gives us and this is what we have so once we come to our plot you can see that it includes the fit it includes the errors into your fit and the same plot because it has errors in there you see that the intercept and the slope changes slightly so that is also something useful that you can do using origin you can select many columns so let's say you have all these columns let's do a demonstration let's set this back to a y okay and then oh, this change to y so let's set this to x okay so now we have two y's and if you want to do multiple fit together you just come to fitting and let's choose linear fit let's just accept and this gives us fits for column b and also fits for column c and you can see the result so this is the first one you can come back and these are the values for the parameters that we got from the fit and this is the second one which is column c which is kind of linear and there you go so this is kind of a perfect fit so our experimental data were were linear very very linear so from the results you can see that for c it's it's highly perfect yeah and if you look at the psns r which is shows high number so you can go through these and you'll get it okay so the next on the list is polynomial fit so we've done linear fit but maybe you want a polynomial fit maybe um, a quadratic or of the other three to whatever that you need so i just created this equation and i've also attached this to the file so just go ahead and have it let's just plot and see how it looks like so you have this is a polynomial of the order five is the highest order so five and let's see how we can fit this so let's zoom out and come back so let's select a and b head over to 
analysis and fitting and we can do polynomial fit open dialog box so over here we've chosen a and b and the polynomial order chosen is two so we can come in and let's say choose one so when you choose one you're going to get a linear fit so that is something to note so you can always use polynomial and use one to get your linear and you see the equation is just intercept plus slope times x so you have it here you can always come back and change the parameters so let's say we are changing the polynomial order to two so you see the fit becomes quadratic however because our equation was to the power five we still don't have that good of a fit and you can keep adjusting this to let's say let's change this to four which is quite close and we have quite a good fit so four is quite close almost there but it's not highly perfect but it's very good for a fit but five i believe should be more perfect so let's change parameters and head over to five so yeah five gives us a very nice and perfect fit so that is something to note and you can always edit edit this as we've already done so yeah and you generate your results as well for polynomial just as you did for linear you have your intercept and you have all these statistics and summary in here so you have your coefficients of your of, of, of the values because the equation will, will be so if you have five the equation is this intercept plus b x to the power one b2 to the power two b3 so you have all these values also found for you so this is a nice tool to have and it'll help you model your data into linear and polynomial fit In this lecture, we'll learn how to do non-linear fit. So let's, uh, let's start by selecting our data A and B of fitting, which uh, I've already provided. So when you come to analysis, head over to fitting and you can see non-linear care fit. So when you come to non-linear care fit and open the dialog box. So remember you have a linear care fit and you have non-linear care fit. So you have your data not linear and it's just like for instance polynomials of second, third orders are non-linear. So the first thing you do here is you have to select your function. So if you select this one, origin has many basic functions. So they are origin basic function and you can so that's a category you can come to function and you can see some of these functions that origin has already provided so let's say we want to do a gauss now this is so this gives us a preview of how a gauss is going to fit with our data and we can also see the formula for the gauss that was used and that is it so you can come in and find any of these so we use the polynomial right and we can choose polynomial of let's say if we choose five you see it fits perfectly okay so that is that is one way and there are many inbuilt functions that origin already provides and it transcends many disciplines so you can go through and see whichever one that fits with your data and you can also come in and see the code of the function so this is polynomial this is going to be the code and you can also adjust the parameters that is given you so 
it's giving me some of these parameters as so if you check the code you have this is what it's going to give me when i do the fit i'm going to get the coefficients of of x's going are going to be these but you can come in and change them and the fit will look different and you can also set bounds as well so that is a nice tool to have you can certainly go through these functions and find what each one can do maybe for some reason your equation or your model is not found in here and you want to create one yourself if you want to create your own function you can come over to user defined and head over to new so it brings about this fitting function builder so this is going to help you build your own function so let's come in and choose user defined and the function name let's choose fitten and then we let's just keep this maybe we can make this fitten okay changes and you can add a description yourself so whatever that you choose over here which is the function model so when you choose explicit you see the hint it gives you the function type so it says that if you choose explicit it means the y is just dependent on one value which is x and that is kind of what we have if you choose implicit you see the kind of equations that you are going to build so let's choose this and also let's choose expression because we are not going to do a lot of equations or we are not going to write a code so let's come to next then the next is you have to choose your dependent and independent variables and parameters so let's go ahead and choose our dependent variable and independent so it's already chosen for us we have y and x but if you label it differently you can also change that and the parameters let's let's add constant so because we did something around 3x to the power 5 i forgot the other one but let's say we have b let's make it small b okay let's just use one so let's just keep it to three so that, that's our b and let's not add constant so we just have x to the power 5 b x to the power 5 and head over to next so now these are parameters if we also put in constant we have to put them here now b we can just set an initial value let's just leave it as one but we have to write our equation so let's write x to the power 5 so let's say this is the equation that we want to write okay and you can do a quick check to see if it's if it works so it doesn't work because you left out b so b not you so it's giving you an idea if you come to evaluate let's say you type x to be 21 and you go to evaluate it says b not you so this is trying to tell you that you're not going to get any results so make sure you define b so b times x5 now when you hit evaluate it should work now b was used and from here you can just go to next and okay let's hit finish so now we are done so from here we can fitting is already chosen for us so now we've added our own and this is how it fits okay this is how it fits and you can come in to the code so you can play around the code and you can also see the parameters that you used and play around them as well so this is quite a, a cool tool to use and you can see what you will get or you can have a preview of what you get you can zoom in and see how you get and when you're done with your fit and you are satisfied you can always hit fit and it generates your report for you and from here you can increase it and this is your fit so you see that the fit was quite great because we had 
b equal to x to the power 5 and we have something like that so you can actually use this to build your models and also um, fit to your data set and it gives you your equation and it's telling us that b is this number so b is probably 3 x to the power 5 which is quite consistent because we had because we used um b to be let me go there but we use b to be 3 x to the power 5 so yeah that is that is it so that is it for non-linear fit also in non-linear fit you can head over to fitting and there are implicit curves so when you come to non-linear fit you can choose many of these as well so there are all other types of fit that origin already provides you can however also come and choose implicit so there are functions inbuilt into origin so when you come to fitting you can choose non-linear implicit care fit you can also choose surface fit and you can choose exponential fit so when you choose exponential for instance category exponential is selected so that is all that you're going to do so you're going to if your data is just exponential because most people work with exponential stuff you can just come in and select exponential at the beginning and everything that you choose is going to be exponential everything that you choose is going to be exponential so that is something to also note in this lecture we'll learn how to simulate fitting so remember that we have learned how to fit a model to our data set however you can also do it the other way around in origin you can rather simulate a fitting and get the data point out of it so to do that you only have to come to analysis and fitting and you see simulate curve so select simulate curve and you have the preview and it says generate curve data with specified fitting function so let's say we want to do a polynomial as we did okay and you have preview so let's put it on auto preview so this is linear is selected and then we can also do let's say with it to the power 5 so it's giving us something like this and we can come in and change the coefficient of of the polynomial so remember the polynomial is the equation is x to the power a not a0 times x a1 times x squared a2 times so you can change these and then see the effect on so let's change this to 100 or let's change this to 100,000 so you can see the effect of it on on your data and you can change even the scale of the plot if you want to plot in a log scale instead of instead of the linear scale you can do that and you can choose the minimum so this is minus 10 to 10 so you can come in and just customize your own fitting so if you want to go with spectroscopy and let's choose let's say this one okay and you can change your parameters change everything and set your new output to let's say a new book and hit okay so so now you have this so this is the simulated function Uh, let's zoom out and there you go you can also come in and double click and go to the workbook so this becomes the data and it gives you the functions that you chose or the parameters that you chose from it so that is also a nice tool to have you can also come into analysis fitting and simulate a surface as well so this is kind of a 3d let's put it on auto preview and let's say you want to so there are some inbuilt functions that you can do so let's say you want to do 
any of these let's see extreme 2d you can change it let's just go over it and see some of the nice things here cosine you can do Fourier 2d so you can come in and just simulate some of these and get the data from it Gaussian 2d so this is a nice tool to have you have something like this and you can change the parameters yourself and head over to new choose a new let's say book and hit ok so this is your plot and these are the parameters and you can always get this data and plot them yourself let me see if it plotted i think we didn't plot this so yeah we didn't plot this i guess yes we didn't plot it but you can always plot this by yourself because you have x y and z let's go ahead and do a simple plot so go to plot head to 3d and then head to let's say color map and you have it and you can this and you can edit this as we have already shown you can come in and edit this yourself as we've already as we've already done so this is a nice tool to have and it's it's great for many 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 things to do so yeah you can come in and edit this yourself it's it's 2d it's not 3d so it doesn't give you the full 3d view but you can edit this yourself so this is also a nice way of also doing some um some simulation on on surfaces and there's a nice tool to have and and do some 2d analysis maybe later origin will add 3d and that will be a game changer i believe so let's keep our fingers crossed in this lecture we'll learn how to do peak and baseline so when you come to analysis and you see peak and baseline so before we start i have pulled up the xps file i've once again attached it as a resource to this class so or to this lecture so make sure you have it so let's just select any the first two and head to analysis and peak and baseline so from peak and baseline let's come to peak analyzer and open dialog so we have something like this now this dialog tells us what we want it tells us that define a baseline find and integrate peak so what is the goal do you want to just integrate peaks do you want to create a baseline do you want to subtract baseline do you want to find peaks or do you want to fit peaks so you kind of have to choose a goal from this side so let's say we just want to subtract a baseline because let's say you have a plot and you don't you want to plot this leveled and show all the peaks so let's say this peak is hanging but you want everything leveled over here so you want to find a base line for the plot so let's just do subtract a baseline and we've already chosen a b as our input so go to next and you kind of have to follow along so what's the baseline mode so already if it's a constant you just select this as your baseline so you can maybe choose let's say mean and this is the mean of the figures and this will be your baseline so it will just subtract everything and bring it down or if you want a maximum or whatever you can also customize it as you want but we don't want that we want xps so this is xps data origin helps us with that we are fortunate that origin adds xps baseline for us but you can choose whatever one that you need over here okay and then just move to next and it gives us some of the functions computational range so you can go in and play along with it and choose the final height and all so you go to next 
and you can choose where the new data goes to so uh, you can just do subtract also and see how it look like and you can hit finish and you're done you have your results over here so let's go back to this and peak and baseline peak analyzer open dialog yeah we can do some more you can you can let's say find peak or fit peak okay so let's do fit peak so it will so the goal will be that it will it will do all these baseline subtractions and and find and fit peaks for us so it has found peaks in the di in the plot range for us so let's head over to next and then we can also choose whatever that we need um, over here so let's just go with let's try something else let's try endpoint and head to next and this is not so good so let's see let's just play along and you can do subtract now so if this is something that you need depending on your data you can go ahead and do that so let's go back and you can also you can also select a portion of your data and just do that so let's do create baseline so this is the goal is that we are going to create a baseline so we'll go to the baseline mode we'll create baseline and then we finish so let's head to next and you can choose whatever date whatever that you want if you want to define yours you can do it i would suggest that always because this this is xps um it's already inbuilt because most people do this with xps but you can always come in and go to user define and choose your own baseline so just select the point so let's say you choose user defined and you can choose any of these so when you choose you see the changes let's just stick with this and you can also add smoothening to it you can also do this so this is you've enabled auto find and the number of points is eight so you have eight you've chose so yeah this also has eight in here and let's head to next so at next what you can do is you can connect by interpolation or you can also connect by fitting and you can adjust whatever that you need over here um over here you can also baseline anchor point you can add some more so when you click add you can let's say double click on this side double click on this side so you can add some more to fine tune it and make it more accurate so this is a baseline this is a baseline and when you click done it adds more points to your baseline you can also select spleen and b spleen and choose your output so let's choose a new workbook hit subtract and this is how it's gonna look like so it gives you this plot where you can plot and have your baseline subtracted so that is a nice tool to also have and know that origin can do that for you in this lecture we'll learn how to smoothen and also filter our data so let's quickly generate some data let's head over to plot and go to function plot and new 2d plot so over here let's just make a sign function so let's do a sign of x and then make this to 6 pi and then let's do number of points to be 20. let's see how it looks okay so we have something like this however we want the data point so double click and then come to workbook so okay now let's try and smoothen this so you come to analysis and you see signal processing 
and the signal processing you see smooth and you can head over to open dialog so on the open dialog let me see if i can make this much bigger okay okay so on the open dialog we have our column selected i always love to put it on auto preview so i know what i'm getting so we have our function which is sine of x and then there which is the black and then the red is our smoothed value or our smoothed plot so we first have to choose the method of smoothening origin provides us with some smoothening we have adjacent averaging so once you select adjacent averaging you can select the weight weighted average as well or not and you can also choose the point of windows so you have to know this equation to use it or at least you have to find the equation and understand what you are doing but clearly this is not a good averaging or a good smoothening model for our data so let's try another one let's try this one so this kind of fits quite well and you can even choose polynomial orders and all so we can choose the points of windows so yeah so this quite fits well so that is great for us you can choose percentile filter and that is also in and you can adjust some of them and you can see it as you go you can apply uh, fft filter and you can see the effect of it as well so let's see and then yeah you can try lowest and there you go and you can play with this so whatever data that you have it can be smoothened using this but make sure you know which method you're using is it suitable for your data and also what the equation is and so that you can explain what you're doing so that is that is how you do smoothening and once you're done so let's let's just try one let's say we did um lowest and let's choose any of these and you can choose where the output goes so let's just choose a new workbook and hit ok so we have our data and you can always plot it also origin helps us to do a lot of filtering it has many built-in stuff for us so let's come to signal processing and you can do fft filter or iir filter and all these others convolutions and all so for this this is also quite the same you can zoom this in so that it comes easy you can choose the filter type let's put on auto preview you can choose the filter type so if you have a low pass filter or a high pass filter you can choose band pass so whatever that you choose you can see the results right away and you can change the threshold or the cutoff frequency depending on which which one that you choose and you can also choose the output and it gives you this output as well the frequency versus amplitude and also the filtered output of your plot so that is a nice tool to have and when you come to analysis and signal processing there are so many other tools that you can use this is also highly specialized and just make sure you know what you're doing and if you want to do convolution for instance you can come in and make sure you play around this if you understand convolution but if you have any questions let me know in the q a section and i can do some real practical examples thank you